4 o'clock, I'll open the, today's meeting, Tuesday, August 13th, for the Hanson Board of Health. Um, this meeting is being recorded. President Kevin Perkins, Peter Butler, Alan Diaz, um, also Teresa Cosio, and uh, Gilbert Amato, the health agent. Um, first order of business approved the Board of Health minutes July 9th, 2024. I already looked at them. Did you guys have a chance to look at them? I did. Yeah. yeah. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I'd like to just take things out of order a little bit. Um, you here for a well permit? Yeah. What property? Uh, Cushing Trails or Main Street? Cushing Trails. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll, let's jump to that, see if we can get him out of here. So it's in the folder. We have a well application for... Yeah, it's in the back. Check in the back here. For uh, Cushing Trails, property off of Spring Street. Yep. Condominium project. Which one's that? Mobile this is Cushing Trail. So what we have is application for an irrigation well only. Um, Cushing Trails well installer, uh, Falls Waterworks. Uh, application dated 7-10-2024. Um, we have a copy of septic plan. Doesn't look like an as built, but and the proposed well is going. Where is it? Looks like it's going on the left side of the property here. Yeah. Yeah. Right over here. Uh, you got to maintain a minimum setback off that property line, right? Uh, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Plan. yeah. Fifteen or twenty-five feet. Would it? Yeah. I would figure what it is, but um, typically, I mean, the only thing we've done in the past, I mean, we don't require testing. Obviously, it's an irrigation well. Typically, the only thing we've done is just. Um, prior to giving a certificate of completion um, or final sign off on the wells just to get an as built of the actual well when it's when it's drilled and installed. Okay. Just from the survey. You mean, you mean it's a yeah, just, just to survey the well and say you know, obviously that's proposed, but if it's here, here, just to get a physical location so that way we know where the physical well is just okay. from file the Board of Health. I mean that's what we've typically done. Um, I don't know if uh, Mr. Butler or Ms. Diaz have any questions or comments other than no. that. No questions. Okay, um, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the well application for Cushing Trails at 486 Spring Street. I'll make the motion. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right, you should be all set, sir. All set. Do we need a piece of paper for a bit? Um, You'd have to come in tomorrow and get it. Sorry. Yeah, there's nothing. Can, nothing you, email. I, can you email it to me? Um, I can if you want to email me and give me your email address, or you can give it to him. Okay. Write it down. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, What's your email address? It's Paul Waterworks. Yeah. Cox. Wait a minute, I can't write that fast. Okay. <laughs> Paul Waterworks. At Cox, C O X. Dot net. Okay. Appreciate it. We Thank can you. sign this now. Or long yeah. from now, so. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So. Conditions we're just going to put um, must submit as built as, built. as well as built. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you need the offset indicated in that, or will it be there? Yeah, they will. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the whole that's point of it. Yeah. 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 Um, so the next item on the agenda, you're here for pineapple, pineapple okay, it is Pineapple Cookie Company um, operating without a permit. So this, this is something I'm not completely up to speed on. I, I don't know. I know that you opened about maybe a week ago. The 27th. Yes, okay. I do know that. Mr. Butler, do you have much information on this? I do not. Okay. Um, I don't know if. Gil, do you want to kind of take take I the lead on this? I mean, you've been handling this. Teresa handles the permitting. 
Yep. And she applied for a permit. She well, no, she didn't apply for a permit. Okay. So permits go for trees. she um, was approved through zoning sometime back for a in May. For a special permit. For a yes. special permit, correct. Yep. Um, came to our office and we were we gave her all of the um, information to obtain a food permit. It's also stated on the um, approval from zoning that a food permit is required. Thank you. Um, and I was on Facebook and noticed that she had opened on the 27th and no permit was ever um, at that time not applied for. And you can see she applied on, I think, August 6th after being open for at least a week. Um, and Gil went there a couple times trying to track her down. And I think you eventually well, tracked yeah. her down, right? But before all that, I did go down there to look at the site as far as being able to open as a site. And so I was glad she was able to open because she was paying the rent at the time. But <clears throat> it never got, you know, wasn't being, wasn't totally built. And that's when I'll do the inspection, the actual inspection, when the place is totally set up. So I was never informed it was totally set up, but at the same time, uh, none of her paperwork was submitted to Teresa for the permit inspection. Yeah, the application was done on the 6th, I think. Am I missing the date on here? Or is it no date? Yeah. It's on the bottom of the last page. Oh, 8-6. 8-6, okay. yeah. And she opened on the 27th. Um, and knowing full well that a food permit was required. So, I mean, as of now, was all the... She would need another in. inspection prior to opening. Right. So the okay. only thing really that's holding this up is final inspection from you? Well, is she completed now? She's going to be completed with Teresa first. I think I have everything that she needs now. Mm -hmm. um, so it needs to be reviewed and then pending an inspection? Yeah, but your last, mm -hmm. last paper get was what, last week or something? Was mm -hmm. In the last week. So. Mm -hmm. I just have a question. Did you know that you needed the permit? I originally was planning to build out a kitchen in the space. Mm -hmm. um, a grease sink, a grease pad, all the stuff that I would need um, to bake and help and all of that. Um, and the plumber quoted me over $6,000 for that project. So, change my plan. Sorry. Um, to bake a commercial kitchen off site and no longer bake in house. So, when we had the fire inspection, because we didn't have the kitchen on site, he's like, oh, I don't think you need to worry about Ford Health anymore and that, that permit because you're not baking here. So I took it as, okay, maybe, because he's, you know, in a official in that. He's, he's, he didn't know called, what he was talking about. <laughs> right. I called a, a couple times and um, we didn't really get anything figured out from that end. And I and he has been paying rent for the space since December. So. Mother, <laughs> she did leave him a couple of messages, which he didn't ret return to her. And I was present when the fire gentleman came down, and I even said, "Is she all set?" And he goes, "I'm not cooking here, so you're all set." And we kind of took it as we're all set. On the other side of it, everything is packaged off-site. It comes in fully packaged. It's a gift shop with cookies. So if you were to go, if you were to go to the other gift shop that's in town that has cookies, like. I didn't see there being a crazy you, uh, she, she is wrong because she didn't finish her paperwork I for the Board of Health. On it. Because, right. because she thought she didn't need the Board of Health. And, and I did tell her. There was an oversight yet that needed to finish yeah. so that. So that's why she did that on Have you not been having classes? You've been having classes because it was on your website. So. I've, had, I've had two cookie classes. There's mm -hmm. no baking. It's just decorating cookies. So the cookies are already pre-made. Mm -hmm. The icing is made. The, the people come in. They sit down at the table. They decorate the cookies themselves. And they take them home. So it's okay. not like it's like a paint by numbers, but with cookies. Right. But it's with, because it's food, you still have to have a permit. So any of the convenience stores, even though they sell packaged food, they still have to have a permit. Right. And, and, and she didn't, and I did talk, she didn't finish her water health paperwork, which I told And she said she did finish it. Last she hadn't even started it. So when I looked that you were opened, there was no permit in the system. So she hadn't even started the paperwork. 
Mr. Butler, do you have any questions regarding it? I'm going to just take a quick moment to yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, I do appreciate you coming in, you know, for this meeting. I mean, you know, technically you didn't have to show up. You could have just let us talk about it. So I respect that you both came in to discuss it. Um, I mean, I, I, I hate personally issuing fines, especially to, you know, to people that are to take the time out of their day to actually show up. I mean, had you not, I wouldn't be against it, but, um, but I mean, it, yeah, no, I, I understand. I started on Facebook as well. We've got to get her open. I mean, she's been paying rent and now she's been closed for over yep. a week. Yep. I mean, but that's through no fault of except her own. Right. Right. right now, okay. I want to take care of this. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. Um, I mean, the, the the problem we have is that, you know, we have to hold a certain standard. No, I didn't you know, that. We, we have to hold a certain standard that, um, you know, ru rules do have to be followed. I mean, we can only bend so much. Right. You know, I mean, I'm just one member. I'm just voicing my own opinion. Um, but, I mean, I could, I could honestly go either way. It doesn't, like I said, I hate finding people, especially, you know, you took the time. You, you obviously care to address it. Um, it. It sounds like, yeah, either oversight or, you know, more, more concerned about getting the business open than doing the proper paperwork, whatever it was. Um, you know, I, I understand it either way. But, um, Eileen, did you have any questions or anything for him? No, no, because she's not the only one that's done it in the past month and a half. So uh, I can understand it's a new business. It's a mistake that you made that you won't make again. No matter what, you have to have the inspection. Even though you get prepackaged, prepackaged doesn't mean nothing. You get people handling raw food still, raw food product. Yeah, okay. So you are doing something. So, so the fire department may have an oversight on his part. He probably didn't have any jurisdiction no, beyond no, that no, because yeah. I, I explained it's still the board of health. Right. It's still the board right. of jurisdiction. Right. You know, and and then you you know this board of appeals decision that would say you know you're going to be bacon. Well, you you know bring it in or whatever. Eventually, once you do get going, you're going to sign bacon there. And no, then no, 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 there's no baking on site. I, I, there'll be no baking on site. It's, it's strictly decorating cookies. Strictly decorating the cookies in there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, like an event space. It's more an event space. So, I mean, as of right now, it sounds like you have everything submitted to us that you need to. I mean, do you think you do as well? Do you think you have everything? She does. She does have everything. You have everything in, so it just needs to be kind of finalized, reviewed, and then. Um, the, the also the, the needs to come out. The um, mobile, whatever you want to call it, needs to be so permitted have, as well. I have a horse trailer um, that I renovated. It's basically a glorified box. Um, it's a that I would like to take off to events. There are some in town. So you're just looking to do like a vendor kind of thing? Yeah, like, she's like, yeah. So that's what needs to be done is we need to inspect that trailer as that well? That needs to be inspected as well. It's already been added. Yeah. I added it to the food yeah. department. It's not like they're like catering. They don't need like catering application and all that stuff. No, no, no. Right? It's, I mean, included, it's included in the yeah, food okay. permit. Right. No, okay. I added it to the food permit. So need, it's only one permit. We just need it. So maybe the same day you could bring it there and have it all inspected, make it easier kind of on you yeah. on him because um, his hours are reduced now. So he's kind of trying to get a lot done in Can a little we time. Can we schedule a time while we're here? Sorry. Um, no. I mean, no, maybe just call tomorrow morning or something. I mean, try to schedule something. Um, we don't know how long our meeting is going to go on, so we don't want to have you sitting here. No, that's fine. Yeah, if you call tomorrow and just you can look at his schedule when he's get a chance at his desk, and then you can probably schedule something now. But well, um, only because she's been closed for a week and a half now, so. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like I said, his hours are reduced, and there's other people online that have, you know, have applications and stuff pending too. So, you know, I'm sure he'll do what he can for you and just call and set something up. Um, but as far as you know, taking action on this, I mean, that's what's. Let's say on start on. I mean, I, I personally don't think complied. I think it was a mistake. I don't think she was trying to deceive anybody. Agreed. And showing up today shows due diligence and. and 
engagement. So thank you for that. Okay. So, I mean, I'll entertain a motion to, to take no action on it, just for the verbal warning that they need to stay in compliance with what they're supposed to. I'll um, make a mo yeah. I'll make a motion. Okay. To, okay. As well to um, take no action. Um, assume verbal um, warning on this one. And okay. while we're with scheduling the inspection, um, knowing that all of the documentation is in place. Okay. Yeah. And the inspections done. And the inspections done, of course. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. Yep. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. Just call to the office and do business. Just make sure. Yes. Good luck. Good luck. You're welcome. I'm, Mom, I'm going to put the check in now because right, I held on to it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Do we need to do anything with this permit application? No. So I just wanted you to see it. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. Uh, so that we don't do. Uh, thank you. That's nice. Hmm? That was nice. That was fair. There have been at least two other incidences where people have had um, things happening and did not get food permit. So, and with the if we punish her, we didn't punish them. Right, and the exception being she's here right. to, to but she yeah. knew very well to change it. Her she came into the office and we told her twice what yeah. she needed. Yeah. But how many times does it take you to get when you get stuff from Camp Kalani? They people that know they do it no, all. No, the no, time. no, no. This is she. Oh, I know. What I'm we're saying. Not gonna, we're going to agree that this is agree. Yeah. Right. You, you to open a, biz, a food business in town without a food permit. We have the other well application. It's right here. I held it out because we had voted on it. All right. So we have another application for a well for an irrigation well for 965 999 Main Street, mm -hmm. um, Egan Development LLC. Um, oh, is this I mean, the it, new second building? I can I can go over this with you guys if you want. I'm going to abstain from voting just because I have done work for this company in the past. Just for the owner of the property. I mean, it's really irrelevant for a well application in my right. opinion. But can yeah. I ask on um, procedural, just, just to um, ed education on well reviews? So it sounds like the criteria, and please add if I'm sure. missing something. Criteria for well review are um, offset from septic system. Um, that it's irrigation only. Yeah, DE. We we have DE. So we don't have different regulations for an irrigation and domestic. So our regulations are essentially for an irrigation well. They have to meet domestic well regulations. As far as setbacks go, mm -hmm. we don't have them broken out. We still don't. Correct? No. Okay. So and I believe that portability test for irrigation though. If no. it's the irrigation, you don't have no. to. Right. No. Okay. But you have to be 100 feet. No, septic has to be 100 feet away from well. So, so that's what I'm saying is the setback yeah. requirements for an irrigation well, as far as enhancing, um, because we don't, we never adopted like specific irrigation well requirements. Um, so you still have to maintain 100 foot from a leaching field. Yep. 50 foot from a septic tank minimum. Um, and I believe it's it's 15. Is it 15 feet from a property line? 15. Feet. I believe it's 15 feet from a property line and maybe 25 from a roadway. Yeah. Um, but those are all just DEP standards, I believe. I believe that's what Hanson just adopted, just what the DEP regulations were. Um, but I mean, that's essentially it. And like I said, what we've done in the past is it's it's good to to document, you know, where all the wells are, whether it's domestic right. or irrigation, because who knows that well could be turned into a domestic well at some point. You know, they could put fil filtration on it, do a do a um, a drawdown test on it, and actually. You know, use that as a part of a well. They could there come was back a time in Hanson when people couldn't tie in the water, yeah. and they had to put in those wells. Yep. So they could come back in at, at a later date. So I mean, that that's probably the way to go. The safe way to go is to just keep them the way they are with the regulations of, of making them meet that without, you know, obviously without testing because it's not a domestic well, part of a well. Do we have any areas in town that are um, restricted for wells that we have to consider in our reviews? This is just education again. I'm sorry to belabor this. Um, not, not to my knowledge. I mean, we don't really see a ton of wells. Are really all just irrigation. Get um, <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, okay. So that it, it. So what I'm hearing when we are conducting our review, we're looking for um, 15 feet from property, 15, uh, 25 from road, 50 I, feet from septic well. I believe. I mean, I can get. I can get the. I can get the specific septic, for you if you um, want. Tank. 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 And then 100 from leaching. Okay. Um, I can look it up, Kevin. It's required yeah. documentation. Believe if you just go um, like as your okay. well regulations, but is it does, is there a licensing requirement for the installer? Yeah, so they usually, yeah. so they usually have a, a well drillers number, 
Um, it doesn't look like there's actually a spot for that on this form. It's on the second page, down the bottom. Oh, okay, here's the drill. So that's the drilling number registered with the state. Okay, and it's a state. You can look it up. Yep. Um, for their well rig and the application. I mean, it's just basically, it's, you know, I treasurer can... approval, conservation, if it's in their jurisdiction, they'd sign off. Um, I mean, that's pretty much the review process okay. of it. And then just like the last one we had done, it's really, you know, pending because they show a proposal location, especially that one that was really close to the property line. Mm -hmm. They show a proposed and yeah, if, if, they, if they decide they move it over or, or it's not done correctly. And now that's because what that, it's not an issue for this property, but it could infringe on this property because if they ever had to do a septic repair, they got to maintain a hundred feet away from that. Okay. So, you know, Having those, the as built is important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They okay. need to know where that is because when they work this property, if they ever have to do a repair or something else, they need to maintain the distance right. from that. So we need to know where that is or yep. the, or the, the engineer who, who does work on an abutting property needs to know where that is. And this is an as-built versus the other one. No, this is this is still a proposed That's plan. That's proposed. Yep. So it's done. So permitted. We get the as -built. Yep. We get the as -built. So we get a proposed. It's permitted, like right here, what they what they wrote on here. Built for approval. Um, yep. Is they showed you know 25 feet off of this property line. It looks like. Yep. Um, there are 100. They, they drew a 100 foot radius to show that there's nothing in that 100 foot radius for a leaching area. Yep. That's and then right. they got 170 off this corner of the leaching field today. Oh, train tracks somewhere. Yep. Yeah, that's train tracks. Yeah, exactly. Fence. They won't be going. There. But this is again, this is a proposed location that they may have obstructions on the site or an issue as mm -hmm. to why they go, hey, we need to move this well over here or over here. Right. So that's why it's important. Like, yep, we, we don't see any issues with it, but we want a physical. This is right where the well is. It's 20, 26.1 feet off this line, and it's, you know, whatever it ends up being. It's 75 off the So it's 75 off the property. It's not abutting a road. It's 170 off the leaching field. Yep, it's 170 off this. This is typically what you'll see is the, the you know, they sketched a 100 foot radius around this yep. to show that there's no leaching area, there's no tank, there's nothing like that. There's the tanks here and here and okay. there within range. And yep. Yeah, both these buildings, this is a shared, um, that's actually a Presby system. Yep. Here. Right. 25 foot well, is that what that says? No, it's 25 feet off this property line. Oh, that's okay. Gonna be All a, right. That's probably going to be a couple hundred feet down. Okay. Um, yeah, all wells are regulated now. They're submitted. They're say, just submitted to a federal database, mm -hmm. uh, and they have to be GPS and everything. Uh, as most recently, we just had the USGS activated a federal well up front here. You can see it on the side of the town hall here. Yeah. It's solar powered, and you go in any time and record what that well is doing. Mm -hmm. Engineers use that well for uh, filter adjustments and septic systems. So all wells are going into a federal database. Great. And open accurate. It's an on time, all time. Reporting to the Fed database. You guys can pick this wheel up. I was going to say, I think you can actually, will it show them on MassGIS or all of them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you can actually, if you go on, it used to be MassGIS and now it's Mutamapper or whatever it is, yeah. but you can pull up like Zone 2, Zone 1, aquifers, um, and I think you can actually, the newer wells, I think they're actually plotted on there that you can click, check a box and it's an overlay and it'll show you where wells are. It'll show you, you know, wow. Well, so, it's, I mean, it's important to document. Yeah. Everyone should know where yeah. they are, not just throwing one in on a Saturday and no one knows about it. All right. I, I think I understand the criteria now to perform a review. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean I'm yeah. not I'm not a professional, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's the gist of it. Okay. Yeah, so. That's the irrigation well for the total property. But that, but again, that, that's what we got. It's an application for 965 999 Main Street Egan Development LLC um, for an irrigation well on the property. Okay. Um, like I said, I mean we kind of went over everything. It's 25 feet off. The rear property line, it's over 100 feet away from any leaching area. It's over 50 feet away from any, any um, septic tank. Um, yeah. I don't see any issues, but like I said, because I had done work for this company in the past, that you owns the property, I'm going to abstain. So you two can vote on it. Okay. Yeah, um, based on our review um, and the uh, request for permit, um, the well, well look, looks to conform with the criteria discussed. So I'll make the motion yep. that we accept um, the plan for, is it 965 to 999 Main Street for the well? I'll second that motion. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. And me. And okay. one and ten. Two zero one. Yep. Two zero. I have it. Great. I'm not yeah, because I'm not, I was trying and it was not going well. So if you, you two want to sign, it. sign that one. Yeah. All right, so it's as far as our agenda goes, okay. so that takes care of the well permits. We have, um, looks like three septic plans. 
start, I guess, 82 Perry Ave, Collins Engineer. That's the first one you got. Did you each like one or you want to share one? Usually just share it. Yeah, that goes with that. And then it goes back to the other one. Is that the sheet? This is going to have the rest of the package. This is for us for the next one. Can you give that to Teresa? Or if you were. 82 Perry So we have a septic application here for a repair for 82. Perry Ave, it's an existing two bedroom dwelling. Um, you know where the review page is? Yep, the review here is no further comments. Um, it's it? College Engineering. Is this new? Brand new? No. Oops, it's a um, dated June 12, 2024. And so what they're looking for is they're looking for a groundwater reduction from four feet to three feet, and they're looking for the use of a sieve analysis. Um, the site is how big is the site? Eleven thousand four hundred forty square feet, so it's a small site. And and the plan looks pretty good to me. It consists of a fifteen hundred gallon. Um, looks like a two compartment tank and then a thousand gallon pump chamber. And it's a pipe and stone system that appears to be. And there, and there was no, no comments on the review. It looks like everything's no, been addressed. Everything was fine. So the only request is for the reduction in water and the seven analysis. Seven analysis. Yep. So they're looking for they're looking for a groundwater reduction from four feet to three feet, and they're looking for the use of a seven analysis because they had encountered water, I guess, high groundwater. And with such a tight site, I mean, reducing and, and from four feet you to can't. three feet. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 reduces, no, anyway, yeah. it, it reduces, you know, one, unnecessary grading and two, you know, possibly a lot of costs additional to um, to this property owner just where, you know, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to grade that yard off with another foot, definitely not. You'd end up with retaining walls, which is a lot of, a lot of added cost to them, and they're already doing an upgrade to begin with. What components of their system are they upgrading? That's what I'm missing. So they're replacing everything. They're putting a new 1,500 gallon tank. Um, it's actually, I don't know if it's. Pump a, it is a so 1,500 gallon two compartment septic tank. Yes, so I'm sorry. It's a refit of the existing. They have an existing 1,500 gallon tank, which is which is code. So they have a 1,500 gallon tank. They're going to maintain that. They're installing a They're installing a 1,500 gallon. Um, it's a two compartment tank. It's a it's a thousand gallon pump chamber with a 500 gallon settling area. Um, and what that does is it's just kind of like a, almost like a free filter to allow, you know, a little more of a settling area than just the, the original tank before it. And then it's pumping up to a D box with, it looks like two rows of pipe and stone. So they're making improvements and we have approved similar requests in the past for the reduction in water table. And yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I don't have concerns. Um, and it looks, I mean, it looks like they're showing it's showing some uh, erosion control. I'm not quite sure. Why? It looks like they're just showing erosion control for the house just during construction, but uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't see any any real issues with it. They're going to move the shed. The shed's there. I mean, that's already cost to them. I mean, it seems like they're trying to do a good thing here. So yeah, the erosion controls for what? I don't, I don't think so, Gil. Oh, we got a barrier. There. They're showing erosion control. Oh, it around. says proposed, yeah. yeah. Wow. Huh. They're showing it wrap, the wrapping around the house to, right. to protect the house. And there's a little bit of lawn here and a little bit of lawn here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Will you take a motion? Yeah, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Um, 
septic repair application for 82 Perry Ave. Okay, uh, making a motion to uh, approve 82 uh, Perry Ave septic repair. Okay, with the um, exemption that there's no on the plan? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's proposed. That's proposed. Second. That's proposed. Okay, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Was that in the back? Nope. Goes right behind this. Mm -hmm. There's got to be three separate ones. Mm -hmm. This three in here. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. So we have the next. Plan is 125 Independence Ave. This is a design done by McGlone Engineering. And so 125 Independence Ave. Yes. This is an existing four bedroom house. This is um, a 1,500 gallon tank, gravity fed through a distribution yeah. box yeah. with one, two, three, five rows of pipe and stone. Um, 27 by 50 leaching area. This application, it says there's no wetlands within 100 feet. Um, it's not within a zone one, zone two. And it's not in a flood zone. They are looking for a variance request of allowing the use of a sieve analysis. In place of a park test, and, and that is it. That's it. Um, on the review, let's see if there is any review. So this review was done on July 6. And the plan was revised on July 7th for the comments. It was just a few, few details that needed to be corrected. A pretty straightforward plan. Looks like they're relocating the water line where the existing water line is right in the way of where the leaching field is. So they're relocating the water line. Um, they're showing a, a breakout barrier around the leaching field. Doesn't appear that there's any wetlands within, they're, they're not working within jurisdiction of conservation. I don't. I don't have any questions. About what Ms. Diaz, do you have any questions? No. I do not. Okay. Mm -hmm. We make a motion that we accept the plan. One twenty-five. Four one twenty-five Independence Avenue. Um, with local upgrade is noted on the plan. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, I know that it said there All right. And the last plan we have is 816 Franklin Street, um, designed by Keo. Uh, Joe Keo Contracting.
Um, all right, so this plan is for 816 Franklin Street. It's a four bedroom house. And this is a, they're gonna install a 1500 gallon monolithic septic tank. The system is a lot of two foot de uh, reduction. Yes, yeah, so they got a 1500 gallon monolithic tank, and then they have a H20 thousand gallon pump chamber because it's in the driveway area. And then they have a two inch force main going to the leaching area, which is the Presby system. But there's a lot of two foot reduction. So in reading through the variance requests, I, I'm not familiar with the with the third request. The inlets and outlets? So you're supposed to be 12 inches above, typically. So your inlet and outlet water. out of your tank yep. should be 12 inches above water table. Yep. Um, when you have existing houses like this, I mean, you have a fixed elevation of a pipe coming out. So you end up, um, you end up having to drop the tanks on the ground essentially and they're really close to the water table most likely so what you need to do is you either you either have the um, precast company when they make the tanks they either put actually rubber boots in them rather than just the plastic knockouts which you usually slice okay. with a knife and then so what they what they want is either put rubber boots in them which can actually be like clamped and yep. sealed or what you can do is hydraulic cement them and, and you know put some type of membrane around them after the hydraulic cement dries and is that reviewed in final inspect inspection that would be um Inspected when they do it. Yeah. Basically, when they do either okay. the tank inspections or a final yep. inspection. Thank you. Correct. As long as there is a point where that this requirement is inspected. Yep. 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 Um, so they are looking for three variance requests. They're looking for. So they're looking to go to two feet from water table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From four. Yeah. So they're looking for. Two foot reduction. Just one and five is close. Yeah, they're looking to go two feet above water table. Um, and then they're looking for the use of a sieve analysis. And then they're looking for um, variants to allow the inlet nullets of the tank to be hydraulically sealed or um, watertight boots being cast into the, into the tanks. So a Presby system is considered um, treatment. It's an innovative alternative system, and it is generally approved, I believe, right? Generally yeah, approved. Generally, you can actually yeah. use it on, on new construction if you wanted to. It doesn't yeah. have to be just for remedial use or repair or anything but like that. But they're a little more expensive then. They are. They are. And, and the thing I don't understand about them is, so you can go to two feet, but when you look at the profile of, this is just for conversation purposes, but you look at the profile of this, and it's a, it's 12 inch on the on the chamber itself, right? On the actual Presby pipe, I think so it's 12, 12, inch. Yeah, 12 inch. So you get 12 inch on the pipe. You need six inches of sand below it and six inches above it. That's your field. So that's a total of two Four. feet. Yeah. So if you were to use, I know you don't get the leaching area with a low profile chamber, but you could use a low profile chamber, and you'd be right about the same thing. And these are a little more expensive. I think it's a better system Into than, a flat, than a low profile chamber, but um, because this is actually a pretty pretty good sized system. Mm -hmm. They must have not had a very good um, work rate there with the soil condition. Oh, really the sieve analysis. Sales, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a pretty good size, pretty good size field. But that was just for conversation purposes. Anyway, yeah, I just, yeah, the Presby fields seem to be larger. You know. In they the are. Residential, um, maybe residential and commercial. Larger. I just wonder if it's going to last longer then. Well, they, they say innovative in general, it's good, so. Yep. It holds the effluent longer into the biomat and stuff, so. But I just yeah, always so thought that was interesting because, like I said, when you look at the profile of it, just that part of the actual leaching field itself is two feet in height, you know, from from where you have to build it. Right. Six inches, 12 inches, and six inches, two feet. So 
you've kind of given away that reduction that you earn anyway. Because a, a traditional, you know, leach and field or a pipe and stone system or whatever isn't, you should, I don't think it would be that high of a profile. It would be less. So you're, you're earning a reduction by using the system, but you're losing it in the height that it that takes to build it anyway. Yep. yep. It's just kind of, I always thought that was kind of weird. I mean, there's a reason, obviously, that they design them, but um, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. I must be missing something because they put a lot of them in. I, uh, I I don't really have any concerns with it. I mean, it's um, the hot setup enhancement so far. Egan's is totally Presby. Right. Uh, Rosen's is totally Presby. That's a fairly large one too. Uh, and Ritter's will be totally Presby. That's going to be huge when that one gets started. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like they're definitely using them more, like in the yeah. the very high flow systems. The press piece. It holds the effluent in it longer than the mm -hmm. Okay. Do we need to make a motion? Yes. That we accept the plan for 816 Franklin Street um, as outlined on the plan. I second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I didn't date these. I know, I'm dating them. That's why I'm borrowing this pen because you're yeah. writing in black. So I'm writing in black. Is that in the book? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to sign this until we actually had taken it. All right. Um, so that brings us to one more item we had that I skipped over was uh, so the fee schedule for all of our Board of Health. All of our jurisdictional fees, I guess. Behind so. it is the big piece of paper. So what Teresa had prepared for us is we have our fee schedule, and then we have a fee schedule with what we could find for the most recent for Pembroke, Whitman, Halifax, East Bridgewater, Bridgewater, Hanover, Marshfield, Duxbury, and Abington. Um, I don't know if we each want to just take a few minutes to kind of yeah. look through them. Oh. And okay. So what this is, is this is us, and then she, and then she did a breakdown one. of all these towns. I mean, this is pretty good. She took took quite a time to put that together for you know, us. This is here for you. Okay. So we're sort of in between. I mean, just the first glance, I mean, anytime I've looked at our fees, I don't think we're really, you know, over the top, and I don't think we're really light on anything. I think we're probably pretty consistent, but... In, I mean, are any of these to towns... Something. Equally, do they have the same population as us? Most of these towns, I think, have larger populations, right? I have no idea. I mean, I'd like to think we're yeah. pretty pretty consistent, oh, I mean, yeah, average-wise, with these towns. Yeah, I mean, I you know. know. Well, but I think we're the lowest, but I wonder, too, if it's because um, we're smaller in terms of population. Well, you could also look at it as, like, food permits. We have far fewer restaurants than Pembroke, oh, Pembroke Whitman, Halifax. Than really any oh, of yeah. these towns. Right, we do. Yeah, except maybe Duxbury. They have a ton. Yeah. They have them everywhere. So, is our objection in this review to ensure that we have parity with other towns and propose potential increases, decreases based on our review? I would not say decreases. Not decreases. <laughs> but I would never say hey, decreases. That we're on a, we're not You'd on be a hero. Well, five. Five. <laughs> yeah, you would be. Right. Yeah. No, they're not. We're not being excessive yep. in our fees. Okay. Unfortunately, in this world, nobody ever gets money back. Nothing ever goes And back. none of these um, fees, to my knowledge, have been increased in 10 years? Oh, more than that. More than that. Do we know how many permits, and if we don't, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, we can just ask for the ones, if we were to consider a change in pricing, which ones might draw more revenue? Like, how, like what are the um, Probably the um, septic ones, so disposal work, construction permit, and perk test. Three quarters of the way down where it says perk test. Yep. Perk test, construction, um, disposal work, construction permits. Those are probably the two biggest ones. Um, and then um, all of the others. 
you know, installers permits, Title V permits. Um, the only thing I think that has changed is um, we added the $25 fee for um, Title V submissions. Because we didn't. So right. So if you're gonna, if you do a Title V when you submit it, most towns have a fee to submit it. So the board instituted that. I don't know, a few months ago. Is that here? Is that listed in the? I'm trying to look to see if it is. No, actually, maybe it's not on this one. Okay. And, and sorry, Teresa, can you remind me what? Um, inspection or permit does that pair with? Which would like? So um, to do a Title V would be the Title V inspector's permit. Which is up there. Yeah. Right. So in addition to the one hundred dollar permit fee, there's a twenty five dollar permit cost. There's a twenty five dollar fee. But application. Per, per application. Per, no, per report. Per, per report. Title V. Yeah. Per report. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that one's in line anyway. So would Title V reports come from like realtors when they No, they come from Title V inspectors. Okay. Yeah. But somebody would hire them. Anytime inspector. you sell your house. Yep. Um, you have to have the Title V. Nine times out of ten, yes. Unless you're selling to like Family. your daughter or right. something you don't like have that. To do like, yes. So my last question would be, are we realizing any kind of deficit supporting the um supporting granting these permits? Like it, are we, if we increase costs on permits, mm -hmm. is that money going to go to something that's experiencing a deficit? Like, yes, the town. So, but not e any particular. None of these. I don't think we have deficits in this because we're doing okay with the permits. Correct. In terms of money coming in. So the fun. one thing that actually the Board of Health keeps is um, the disposal works construction permits and the perk applications. That money stays within, yeah, the, board within health. the board of health. In the, in, I have an escrow account. And everything else goes into general? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that account is not suffering right now? Which one? The escrow account? The escrow account, yep. No, but I'm waiting to um, ask the town accountant what else we could do with that money. Okay. You've answered my question. So. Because right now we pay, um, we pay the person that witnesses our perks. Mm -hmm. We pay out of that escrow account. We also pay the engineer, the outside engineer that reviews all of the plans. Yep. yep. We pay him out of that account as well. And we have enough money in that account. Yes, because I'm continually putting. Any time a perk application comes yep. in, I take that money and put it in the escrow account. So to me, that would exclude any increases in permits within this bucket because the revenue that we use from this bucket is sufficient to pay the services that we fund. As of right now, I'm waiting to hear back. So and and, I, I it's, still, and we, it's still above yep. because we're not, if we're charging 200, we're not spending 200 to have right. the test, somebody go out and witness the test to the park. Um, so it's, it's $50 an hour. So, right. yeah. <laughs> so we're not losing even. To me, I would say that's we off the table. Say, yeah, we probably don't need to. Yep. Housing inspections and ledger termination, how often do we do those? Very, very rarely. Very rarely. And the well permit's been at 100 for a while. As long as that. All of the other has not had an increase since I've been here. So swimming on the on the permits here, swimming pools, whirlpool permit. Um, I mean that's we don't really have we, we have, have a fee for it, but we don't have any. So we don't have any public swimming pools or whirlpools. What would that be for? So like for like Whitman, if yeah. this was Whitman, Whitman has a town pool. We don't have a town pool. Right. No. So I'm just curious because sometimes I'll see that like filling a swimming pool in needs to be inspected, and I, I think. 
I don't know. Would that be would that building. be board of health inspection? A building. Building. Because when they decommission and have to fill a pool, mm -hmm. sometimes I was just curious what that was on there. Probably two thirds of the way through the list. I'm kind of just going through and just kind of taking the average, same, and just kind of comparing it to ours. I mean, roughly, yeah, it's not perfect. Some of them are, you know, are tobacco the same. Way way out of oh. there. tobacco. It's the I think it's the greatest percentage out of there. We're very low. That everyone else is much higher. Much much higher. But I'm thinking. Like and we don't have. I don't think we have anybody that has. I'm trying to think who has a tobacco permit because um, a lot of people stopped selling tobacco. And generally, it's attached to a food permit. Well, except there was a place in. So, yeah, I think the only person have... that. I think you're right. I think they're the only ones that have a tobacco permit. They have a food permit and a tobacco permit. Our pig permit is very high. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. I have to I'll tell you the story. Oh. Yeah, but I don't I, I don't really see anything that how's the inspection? Identified a few that seem out of parity if we want to review. Folks, when folks are ready. Sure. Within food service, our up to 25 seat license is, you know, probably 30 to 50 percent lower than others. Is that, did you say retail? Retail food? Yes. Are you, you talking the top one? Food service system. Food service system. Oh, food service system. Oh, food service system. Um, the 26 to 75 seat, same. Probably just a little bit lower than everybody on that. Yeah. The ice cream truck, or the, the mobile truck permit. Those ones are the circles are the ones that, if you want to just compare it with yours, then yep. then you can probably just say you're going it over, going over the whole thing if you want. So when we have matches are. Sorry, it's all the circles on the left. That's kind of what I did. I see what you're doing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ice cream. Yep. So we're on the same. Truck. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, you don't have that. You're at tobacco sales. Sorry about that. Yes. Is it within our jurisdiction to just up fees without? Yes. Yes, so it. So these are the, like, do you want to compare these to yours and see what I, we I all have? I want to ask one question first about dumpster permits. We don't really have any. I didn't think so, because I'm thinking dumpster permits, business, residential. I never got a permit when I got a dumpster. <laughs> I never no, heard that's, of them. That's a thing a lot of towns do. Some do it through the fire department. Some do it through the building department. Mm -hmm. And I never understood the fee. It's... I've never gotten to see as many I, I, times as I've had a dumpster. Well, because it's not really. <laughs> how would, yeah, like how would anybody know that you no, had a dumpster? It's really not really. Not on my street. No, it's not enforceable. Unless you had the dumpster the building department. There, but the, the, building the dumpster department. police probably wouldn't even find their way down. Believe it in, in. It's more popular in you know cities and cities. stuff that you know where they get permits because it's on the side of the street or or 
people park it in their yard and they have it there forever. So on the on the building permits, a lot of times there's a spot um, where your trash is going to be disposed or construction debris. Yeah. And depending on what you put in, you could put a dumpster. But um, I mean, it's just I think it's probably one of those communication things that probably slips through the cracks, and that's why it's not really enforced. All right. Um, that's fine. I don't really agree with it because to me that's just like really taking money because they're not getting anything out of it. I you mean, could take the you could remove that fee. Yeah. I mean, I mean. It, the only uh, the only other thing I could consider is just that the you know I've, ha I've been in towns before where fire departments you had to get the permit through the fire department because they wanted to know where dumpsters were. I mean, in case of fires, in and case what of might a be in them. fire, but I mean it's not like they're going to probably go up and it's no, uh, but inspect it's, the the dumpster, it, it, but they probably know if there was a fire, people put stuff in there they had no business putting in there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, probably at the end of the day, if something's on fire, they're going to go put it out. They're going to go put it up, and they uh, yeah. But I mean, I don't know. That's I'm just. Speaking out loud, that's, just, that's the only other time. I thought I've never, never knew. Contractors, I'm sure they don't tell us when they get dumpsters. No. no. On the building no, I'm so, sure no one's no. ever, ever actually gotten a dumpster permit. And maybe we should remove questions from all fees. I mean, I, I would think that any, any fee associated with that would just be blanketed by a building permit. You're paying for a building permit or or you're just doing a weekend clean out, I mean, uh, what, right, why right. is there a need for You're a already paying a whole bunch for the right. dumpster. Right. Why you're would I have you're to doing everyone a favor cleaning things up, so, yeah, I'm not in favor and of And again, no one's going to be that, riding around looking for dumpsters. Maybe I'm, I think whether we leave it there or not, I mean, it's probably not going to be enforced. It hasn't been, doesn't no. sound like, but. No. Nope. That was my only question. Calculating. Doing averages. Okay. So the food establishment license uh, for 25 seats, where Kevin and I had a match on identifying it as a high cost, average is 142.50, and our fee is 100. Um, next one in line was the milk permit, where the average is 17.50, and our fee is 10. Is it helpful to run? Oh, you an did an average. Of, yep, an average of the of the. All of them. Of the data collected that, that yep. Teresa collected. Yep. It's on 10, 20, 25, 15, they're all over the place. So if we're considering increases, we have to determine if we want to make it at below or above average. And this is mostly stores, right? Yeah. It's just it's like Shaw's and all the little convenience markets. Well, we have the milk inspector over here. so I, I know, but that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. all of these little establishments. It's the the restaurants milk. and... Um, yeah. yeah. All right, so... Are we going to come back to Proposed law. Yeah. Planning, we're going to go through everything first and then propose? Um, He's busy. I mean, if it's, so easier to just, if it's easier to make a decision on each one. And, and then move through, on. That's fine. Right. Plus, fine with it that. gives him a minute to average the next one. All right. So <clears throat> that first one, Peter, I believe it was food establishment permit. It was up to 25 seats. We're at 100. You came up with an average of 142.50. That is correct. Um, I mean, would we Close feel comfortable with 125 or 150? I mean, we're not exceeding the max. I mean, there's still a few towns, Abington, Duxbury, 175. Seems like, yeah, 150. Say, how often do we conduct this review if it's every 10 years? It hasn't yeah. been. I mean, I've been here probably been 12 years. years. Yeah, so I would maybe err on the side of going slightly over. If it's if if our review increment is very high, so I would agree with the idea of 150. Okay. So then the next one goes up. So we'll we'll pencil pencil that in, and then we can maybe take a vote on all of them at the end. Or mm -hmm. that, makes sense. that makes sense. All right, I'm trying to get to the next one. So for the next okay. one that we had agreement was the milk permit. Again, our fee is ten dollars. The average is seventeen fifty. Before you do that, yep. because yeah. we moved up this one to hundred and fifty, right. mm -hmm. the twenty six to seventy five is at one fifty. We need to move that up. So we're gonna have to bump all the way down the line. Do we make it up we to seventy up. up to seventy five seats is one fifty? Do we really have to go the first one's up to twenty five seats is paying one fifty. Right. That's proposed. So would we go to one seventy five? Um on that one, because each one's going to have to go up. If the bottom one goes up, it's kind of not fair to charge people with 75 seats 
instead of me trying to do this with the phone, do we want to revisit this in a future meeting when we have all of the averages calculated in the column? Would that be too much to ask, Teresa? As long as you're going to average the... <laughs> You want to do it I have no issue as long as you're going to do the math. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do math it now is do not it my strong yep. suit. But, I'm, but even if we just went up maybe 50 each, does that make sense? Well, because the difference between each is 50 already. Right. Um, what that would mean, yeah, I mean, for the 100 plus seats, we would be going up to 300, which would place us on the higher end of the average, uh, but not much higher. Let me do the box. No, when, yeah, you can do that one. Why don't you do that one? Because that one's, um... I think if we're at 150, 175... For the next one? And 225. And left 100 plus the one at 250. And then maybe only go up to 275 on the 100 plus. The 100 plus average is 256, and we're at 250. So what about 275? That would make more sense than 300. So to recap, we're looking at 150 up to 25 seats, mm -hmm. 175 for 26 to 75? Yep. 225 for 76 to 99? Yep. And 275 for 100 plus? Yes. Correct. Okay. And on the milk permit, we have our cost was 10, and Peter, you said you came up with an average of 1750 on that. Um, no, I was thinking at least 15 then. Well, we're, that's below average. At 15. It's 17. Well, so do you want to go higher? Do you want to go 20? I'd say probably to make you don't want to do seventeen fifteen and I'd say twenty in the middle. Twenty. You don't do pennies. No. Twenty's <laughs> probably fair. I mean twenty? Um yeah. There's one, two, there's three of them that are twenty, twenty five, and then one, two, three. It's average. It's right in the middle. I'm, I'm waiting for him to Well seventeen fifty is the average you said. Yeah, but we're not gonna do fifty. Would have to be probably no, I know. I'm, saying, I'm, number. Saying so. I'm thinking we go to 15 or 20. Right, we're either going even. below average or above average. So I think probably going above average is what we what we basically have done on these other ones. Does anybody Slightly get these above. milk permits? Yes. Every place oh, that every place that sells milk. Okay, well then. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go for 20. Oh, All right. Oh, so. Oh. So are we comfortable with going to 20 on the milk permits? Yes. Okay. We're going to have to raise it for a while. All right. Um, Frozen dessert. Wow. The next one that we had a line item on was mobile truck permits, where we have $50, and it says dash ice cream. Mm -hmm. The average across the board is $91.50. Mm. Um, I would propose 75 Okay. Thank you. Go back up to the um, frozen dessert. Okay, so are we are we okay with seventy five dollars on an ice cream mobile truck? truck? Yeah, that's the only twenty five dollar increase. Okay, and were, I, were we going to visit the mobile lunch? Dessert? It doesn't it's like it's a food truck. Mobile lunch yeah. is like a food truck. Okay. Yeah. okay, frozen dessert. We brought the milk permit up to twenty. The frozen dessert was twenty five. Do we want to go up on that? Does the milk have that? Yeah, they should. Wait, you stop adding. This is between 50, 65, and we're at 25. We're at There's only one other town that's that low. I think that most of them are too low. Yeah. I mean, Hanos, I'm surprised that Hanos are low. Hanos are. We must have a lot of restaurants and a lot of real estate that's paying their taxes. They, they have, like, the mall. Yeah. I mean, that brings in a lot. I just sound like math instead of gas. Go right ahead. I think the frozen dessert should be 50 to 10, 70. Yeah, you know what? Can we just make um, the frozen dessert yeah. permit 
on several occasions, additional inspections are required because of they because they have to be tested through yep. a lab. Yep. So I put twenty, but we have to talk about it. It's at twenty five right. It's at twenty five right now. Oh, sorry, wrong wrong line. Yeah. Frozen dessert permit, I have it as ten dollars. Am I not looking at it right? No, you're no, not. I'm not. Okay, you're not. No, that's, that's why. the milk. It's at twenty five right now. Okay. So thirty eight fifty is the average for frozen desserts. So do we want to go to thirty five, or do we want to go higher to forty? Yeah, Gil's suggesting fifty because it's it's, it's a, a pain. Trip. Yeah, it's almost a weekly trip because yeah. of okay. the testing because they have to send it to a lab. It's a lab test and they, it's a temp test they, on site. It's a shutdown. Okay. Yep. So we'll go 50 on the frozen dessert. Who's back to the lab and the counter high? Peter, I did a couple down the bottom. I don't yep. know if you had them, but um, so housing inspection, I came up with an average of 72.50. And we do $40 know. an hour. I don't know if you had that, yep. if we we're going to re revisit that. but um, And then body art establishment, I came up with $210.70. For Sorry, for housing inspection, are you including hours as the within the average, or just the um, two fifty five? Do we know if those housing inspections is that what they charge per hour? Yes, it says okay. hourly per hour. Okay. I took two ninety divided by four. I took our forty and then seventy seventy. Uh, I have seven not been including hundred and fifty. I I didn't include our metric in the average, so I just seventy five seventy five oh, okay. hundred. So okay. I'll redo it. But yeah, we're way off. We're way off with that one. Oh yeah, right. All right, so that changes it to eighty-two. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know why we would use ours to bring the average. Yeah. Change the average. And you're thinking seventy-five? One eighty. It's eighty-three, thirty-three. Oh, okay. So, so like seventy-five would put us in line with Whitman and Halifax. Thirty-three, thirty-three. I would prefer 75. That's for housing inspection? Yep, per hour. So back to tobacco sales, though we may not have a lot, mm -hmm. um, our fee right now is $25 and the average is 158 So uh, we're way, we're way, way out of And we do line. have a couple of places, so we need to go up. Mm -hmm. Would we start by going up to 75 or go higher? Well, if the, if the average is 150 and we're only at 25, is that what you said? Yeah. There's one hand. Halifax is $50, yeah. and the others are all either 100 and up. I think more than doubling any fee is not fair, but right. I mean, it's a low enough fee, but I, I, but, nah, I think yeah. doubling, doubling a fee is it's pretty drastic. Uh, if you want to, I've redid that number for you. So. Two hundred twenty dollars eighty three cents on body art establishment. Body art establishment. Yep. So two twenty eighty three was the average I came up with. Oh wow, we're out of there. Yep. And then um, yep. The only oh, yeah, other I the only other one I had, I believe, that was down towards the bottom that you hadn't got to yet, Peter, was just the dumpster permit. But again, I think that was something we we're considering removing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So on the um, so. We stopped the, from the top down. We stopped at mobile truck permits, where fifty dollars is going to go to seventy-five. Yep. The next yes. one in line was tobacco. Mm -hmm. Yes, which was at twenty-five. And do we agree that more than doubling is not as reasonable? Do we, would is fifty making sense? Just doubling it. There's one town that's fifty. At, or, I guess it depends on how often are we going to go over this. If we're going to do this on an annual basis, yep. then I'd say go fifty, and then maybe next year raise it more. Yep. But we're not traditionally doing that. Well, because we have. I mean, I think just to bring them up to speed. I mean, seventy-five. And the average was what? One fifty-eight. One fifty-eight for. Yeah, one. Marshfield must not like the smokers. It's three hundred. Yeah. Wow, really? I mean, it's it, the highest. Yep. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I really support the reason of that it hasn't been revisited in a long time, a reason to make it less, you know? I mean, oh, no, but yeah. I don't want to hit anyone over the head, years. at the right. same time, I look but at it that they've been getting a deal for all these years. They also. have been, but, you yeah, know, I could go either they already have but. the cost of doing business, and this is just one more to add to it. Yeah, That's I mean, why I'm wondering if we just went up 
to 50 and then revisited it or maybe but, up to 75 but not much more than that but I mean again even just to you know even if we jump to the average it's not like we're going you know to the top of the scale we're still picking I, I think by taking the average we're still being consistently fair across the board with what all the other towns would be charging for the same thing and what their fees are so and I would I would say 75 or 100 would make sense to me. It's it's a right. triple or oh, yeah, triple. That's triple. Yep. Uh, but it's one hundred is still fifty eight dollars less than average. Right. So. But it's only because we haven't taken a look at it in a long time. Yeah. So yep. it's not kind of their fault. Yeah. So, mom, um, what would you guys choose? Seventy five or a hundred on that? I'm fine with a hundred. Hundred. Okay. Are we? I'm just fine. And then our next two were body art establishment. And then housing inspection. So for body establishment, the average is two twenty eighty five. And we're at one fifty. Okay. Do we have tattoo artists and body art artists? And yeah, we one, I think we just have one, one. And there's so another the person that's going to be potential putting one in. Mm -hmm. okay. But we have we have another tattoo type artist for the Iron Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about her. Yeah. Considered tattoos. Yeah, she is. The apprentice. No, um, Aura Lash, isn't it Aura? No, Jewel. Yeah, I forget so the name of it. There is somebody else that does it in town. Yeah. Gil, does this just require a permit, or does it require an on-site as well? Uh, well, because you know we need a zoning could require the permit for board of health yeah. and an on-site visit, which they're We're just talking board of health, though, Gil. Yeah. Yeah. But so the so, complexity is not just seeking right. permit. No, it has to be advertised in the paper yeah. for two weeks okay. and all so, kinds of. Okay. So an increase, increase in this one is reasonable because yeah. there's a bit yeah. more lift. Yeah. Okay. So if the average is two twenty and we're at one fifty. So and that, not to hold things up, but so the body art establishment, that's that's a one time, that's an application fee or that's an annual fee? That's a, um, mm, I thought it was an application fee. No, it's an application, an application fee. fee. So and that then, so that's the application fee. So there's no annual fee on because doesn't that require an inspection? Yes. But what about the practitioner? Is that that's not annual? It's one time. So that that's yeah, that's that's we're in range but on that for that. But I'm I'm more concerned with so an establishment where it's costing us money. How many inspections does that require, Gil? It's yearly. So it requires an annual inspection, but we're only taking in a hundred fifty dollar one time fee for that. Plus a hundred dollars because they have to have two permits. They have to have the establishment and then they have to practitioner. Correct. So yeah. But are, are the but are these practitioner and apprentice license um, not licenses um, one year fees so these are renewal every every year we get we only get one I know this is kind of new it is new I'm looking on the myself permitting because, software yeah, right now I, I don't I think it's a one time yeah, fee. First I think it is too yes. I just want to make sure because if it is a one time fee I need you know I want to make sure on, that I'm we're gonna, covering our costs I'm having to go out and do an inspection on this yeah because it's not over the next five years that we only took in right. Two hundred dollars. One time fee of yeah, it's a it's just it's like a well permit. It's a paper application. We don't I'm yeah. looking online and we don't offer it online. No so we go up to two twenty five on that. So, so it's a one time thing. Both of them. The establishment and the practitioner. Well the practitioners time. were were already in, in line with other towns. I, I wouldn't recommend an increase because we're fairly in line with other towns. Okay. But the establishment, the since we are not, I would, because the average is 220, I would suggest 225, but. I have to see if we can get it on here. All right, so we're looking at an in increase of 225 to body art establishment. Yes. yes. 225. Okay. And the last one that we shared concern was the housing inspection, which is. Moving up to $75 an hour. Yeah, that average yep. I came up with 8330. 8333 and then right. moving it up to 75. Yeah. That makes sense. Seventy-five. In lead, do we need even need to worry about that? No, no. So I just want to. Um, so retail food establishment, the very top one, you're leaving that one alone, correct? We can run, we can run the roll if you want. All um, right, that would be great. Yeah. I have them here. Do you have any more? No, those are the ones that we had. You want, you want to read through them? I can read through yeah, them. Yeah. So I'll read through the ones that we had a match on for concerns. And again, this is because we're being recorded. Um, reviewing our current fees. Comparing these fees to the average of like communities and proposing changes to our fees based on the average. 
So uh, for food service establishment permit, not retail, this is food service establishment permit, uh, up to 25. Uh, the average was 142. Our current is 100, and we're proposing 150. Mm -hmm. okay, moving down the line, 26 to 75 seats, moving to 175. 76 to 99 seats, moving to 225. 100 plus, moving to 275. Next was the milk permit. Tell me to slow down, Teresa. No, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Average is 1750. Ours is 10, proposed is 20. Fruit and desserts, average is 38.50, ours is 25, proposed is 50. Mobile truck permits, average is 91.50, ours is 50, proposed is 75. And that's for ice cream, correct? Yes. For ice cream, correct. Yep. Tobacco sales, average is 158, ours is 25, proposed is 100. Far down to body art establishment. Average is 220.85. Ours is 150. Proposed is 225. And the final change is housing inspection, where the average is 83.33. Ours is 40 and proposed is 75. Uh, Matt? One other ahead. thing. Um, are we considering just the removal of dumpster permits altogether? Um, or, or just the fees associated with them? I mean, I think. For both the contractor and the business and residential, because we don't do, do either anyway. I mean, it's either something that needs to either, we got to pick a road. We either got to remove it or start enforcing it, I think, one or the other. But just to have it there, it just doesn't really make sense. To it do doesn't that. look like the other towns have it, except for Duxbury and Abington have the residential, but they don't contractor. Contractors can also dump it. That's very at one time, there's not much charge for them because uh, the dumpster is part of a food inspection. So I don't know. Do we leave it as is? I don't know. It's food because it's part of the food inspection, the dumpster. I mean, so each place has a food inspection. I mean, that stuff to me would only be something right. that would that would accumulate a fee of more of a fine if there was an issue of someone. Yeah. Not a fee. Yeah, not a, a fee, but a, but a fine. That's the only cost associated with having a dumpster that I would ever... I would have yeah, seen. I don't understand the explanation there, so that's not the only thing I can think of. You know, so. Okay, so there is a proposal to remove dumpster, permit contractor, and residential from our fees list, understanding that it's enforceable by fine only. This is only five bucks. It's not what's going to generate a lot yeah. of revenue. Agreed. But it's not going to generate anything if it's not being enforced anyway. And, right, know, right. I mean, and we don't have. As far as I know, it's never been enforced. Yep. And it's how, confusing how to our. To, to contractors seeking permits. If they see it on our fee schedule and we're not enforcing it, then... They're not going to ask about it, I can tell you that. I would, I would <laughs> sorry, I agree with yeah. removing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we I think we can remove it. Okay. All right, so that it's would not be something the, we're ever going to do. All right, that would be the last change to it. Uh, Teresa, did you have something? No. You had a question. You started to ask. I changed my mind. Change lanes? All right, so uh, that was... A lengthy list, but I'll entertain a motion to um, approve the amendments. Um, I need an effective date as well. So, uh, that, that's a good question. So just so we're all on the same page, this is going to be for renewals. I mean, obviously not nothing retroactive affecting anyone that currently has a permit or anyone that's applied prior to a date of today, right? Do you want to do January? Is that when most permits are up? Or do you want to start now? No, I, I mean, it's just a fee schedule. I mean, if there's okay. a renewal. On so the September? Yes, I would agree with having, uh, do we post our fee schedule online? Yes. So I'd say uh, revise our fee schedule and post it online for what period of time before enacting the, the change? What's a reasonable? No, usually it's just post, it's that you make we the change post, effective post, and then it's just posted. And then yeah. Post okay. Yeah. So we don't give anybody a pre-warning as of this day. No. The fees are effective. Okay. So they can be effective September 1st? Can be effective tomorrow. I mean, it's yeah. right. going to affect right. when someone has to renew it anyway. Yes, type it up. <laughs> August 15th? Today, you love that because you're the thirteenth. The thirteenth. Yeah, I already have everything typed up. I mean, okay. all I have to do is pop the numbers in. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think just to, for the sake of just getting things done and getting them off the list. I mean, yes. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Works. 
All right, so I'll entertain a motion to amend the, um, the fees list for the Hanson Board of Health um, as proposed by the board members, um, effective August 15th, 15th, 2024. I'll make that motion. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second the motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 And do we now want to vote on removing those two separately? Did you want to remove those two separately? Or does it matter? Part of the amendment. I think it was part okay, of the amendment. Okay, part of the amendment. All right. Do you need that? Put it in the ocean. No, I have fine. This is the tonnage stuff. It's okay. right here. So, one other item. I can briefly touch on and then we can kind of roll into um, Gil's agent report, I guess. Is So I got an email from Chris. I don't know if you guys were also on it. You guys received the email from so. Chris? Okay. So, uh, Chris, so there's a copy uh, of it over there. Up at the there's, a there's a copy of it. You should have a copy of it, I believe. Um, maybe, that, maybe I only printed one copy. But Chris had expressed some concerns with our current contract. Um, with Harvey Waste, um, I can read the email, go over a few things. So, um, several different difficult circumstances have been arising with Harvey Waste. One, missed pickups, wrong containers, picked up half empty. It seems as though they no longer will be able to do pickups within a 24-hour period, and now it's becoming more 48 to 36-hour wait. I was told by the roll-off supervisor if we don't want wait or missed pickups, we should get on a schedule and have the compactors pick up on set days. In theory, it sounds nice, but if compactors are empty or not full on those days, they'll be picked up right. empty or light. Um, Harvey Waste charges a fuel surcharge and a hauling charge per container. I mentioned if I were to implement a set schedule, the likelihood of sending out a half full or empty container would be on a regular occurrence. Uh, the town will lose money. Obviously, that will be an expense to us. Number two, when the town originally contracted with ABC, fluorescent light bulbs were picked up as part of the agreement that they would not be put in the trash per state law. But now Harvey Waste says they have no mention of that in the contract and the town will have to pay to have the fluorescent light bulbs picked up. Uh, three, they've also told me there will be no more Saturday pickups. So in conclusion, 48 to 36 hour wait times for pickups, no weekend pickups and missed pickups have left us in a difficult position to predict when these boxes will be closed and, and then needed to be picked up. The quality of service is greatly diminished. No one answers the phone or has a voicemail to leave a message. The only communication I can get is through text. I've also made Gil aware of the situation and he's tried to reach out as well. Um, so I actually had, I asked Chris in my response to the email, I asked him to, you know, CC Teresa and Gil, everyone on this as well, and I asked him if he could come to the meeting today just to, just to be present. So he called me at about 3.50. He said things are too busy up there. He wasn't able to make it. Um, so I asked Teresa, she spent some time on this today, and what this is, is this is a, a, a list for an average from January through July of how many dumpsters have gone out per month. So municipal solid waste for January was four, February was five, March was four, April was five, May was five, June was four, July was five. Same thing for single stream, same thing for cardboard. Just just so, because again, I, I think I've mentioned this before, I don't utilize a transfer station. I have um, a dumpster at one of my properties. so. Um, I don't see the day-to-day -day kind of operation and see, you know, the traffic in there and stuff. So I'm trying to just get a gauge on it myself, but I thought this would be good to look at. So, I mean, on average, we're getting a pickup of, I understand there. Once a week? Well, we're getting, yeah, basically on, on solid waste, we're getting once a week. Once a week. Um, and to my understanding, there's five containers up there, or four. There's two, two for solid waste, and there's two for single stream recycling. And then there's one for car. Hardwood, yes. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, I understand there might be multiple hauls during a week, but not necessarily for the same thing. So, Hardwood, I so, should leave February and March. Yeah, for the full month. This is such a. Do we know if the three pickups, are we requesting pickups when they're full? That's the question. I'm well, and that's forward. that's what I'm trying to understand is, okay, so I'm just looking at, let's just look at solid waste for a second. So we have, we had four pickups in January, five in February, four in March, five in April, five in May, four in June. So it looks like we have an average of four and a half roughly without doing right. any numbers. So, which is, you know, one a week. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not up there, but at my first glance, it's, that should be fairly easy to gauge, you know, when, when a dumpster is going to be full and, 
and to, to schedule that ahead of time, to make sure they're full. And I don't know if it's just a lack of communication between the hauling company and we have to get a different contact information for, for Chris up there. Chris also says that you can't tell when they're full. You're supposed to gauge it based on pressures, but those machines are so old, it's hard to tell if it's half full. Well, that, three quarters of the way full. That, that was a concern of his a while back, and I know that he had that. said they that did? that had been addressed because the pressure gauges on some of the compactors weren't working we're correctly, working. Okay. and they had addressed that. So they fixed um, it. When so I that, was up there on Saturday, all, all the lanes were open, which is very unusual. So that that that's where I was going with some of my questions. That my Other than backing up cars into the street and making it completely un, unuser friendly to use the transfer station, like... You know, waiting a minute or two minutes, you know, to have to get through there or something. No, it's not that long. It should, no, shouldn't be a big line. deal, but yeah. I, I don't think we should be, you know, have two half full dumpsters and have both lanes open at one. I mean, it's, ideally, we should be, let's fill this one completely. Yeah, if you have to open it once in a while, let the third, fourth car use this one. And I think and they do that. To, I think they do that because I know I've seen him say, we're trying to fill this up so it's, because it's ready to go out. So I know he does that. Right. But they do that. I mean, there's, there's two municipal waste dumpsters up there, and they empty one per week. I mean, to me, looking at this, I think this is a matter of organization and planning, that this should be pretty easily addressed, that, you know, you should be able to know when there's only four going out a month, you should be able to plan within a 48 or 36-hour window. You know, I understand that that's 48, 36 business hours, so if you call, you explain, you know, if you call on a Friday and they're not doing Saturdays anymore, they're not going to get it to Tuesday, but... I mean, this should be something that should be resolved with proper planning and proper communication with the company, I think. Do this we is... have the dates they pick up? Not, I'm talking about the actual day of the month so we can see what the time is between. So, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I do, and I wonder, is the vendor looking to have scheduled pickups and we're resisting scheduled pickups because we don't want to... Empty containers. We don't we, want to send... We pay a lot of money to okay. yeah. send empty containers. They would have to plan and organize to say, all right, we know we got to pick up on Tuesday, so we need to fill this so there's one that's full that's ready to go on Tuesday. Right. That takes the organization that you're talking and, about. And I think only filling one a week, I think that's tough when you're utilizing, you know, a supplemental, you're using a primary one and a supplemental one to keep the traffic flow down on busy days. That's my next question. So if we have a schedule for one time per week, we know that we're going to have that. And then could we do an ad hoc pickup? Because we're going to have heavier days. He's saying he can't get in touch with them. He can't get in touch with them for the ad hoc pickups. So I, I I got the phone number or two phone numbers from him of who he's been calling, of um, the operations manager, I'm told by him, uh, this gentleman here. I got a phone number for him, and I have a phone number that he calls when he tries to get maintenance. So I, I'm going to get together with Gil and try to see if we can – I know. Uh, is that a context? The, yeah, because I don't know if maybe the, the companies have merged, they've been taken over, they've changed hands. So I don't know if some of these numbers that are maybe old numbers or old contact information that it may be as simple as he's maybe not, not getting, to, the right getting to the correct person. So when you're contacting someone else, they're trying to help, but it's not really priority to them. Exactly. It's not priority. It's not really what they do. So they're only going to help so much kind of thing. So that would, that would be um I, I think we need to try to first address, make sure we're, we, we have proper communication with the company. So I'm going to get together with Gil and try to address that. And then the other part of it, I think, is, you know, to a certain extent, they have to, you know, they have to take charge down there to make sure that we're getting the most value for a dollar and sending these things out full. Um, I mean, with, with only, I understand it's, you know, looking at it with just this four and a half per week of solid waste and there's four and a half of single stream that are going out, you know, per, uh, per month, you know, so it's roughly one a week. I mean, that should be manageable to try to, to try to plan when, you know, as long as the equipment's functioning correctly and the gauges right. are functioning yeah. correctly and you can tell when they're full. Right. But ideally you want to prioritize to fill, have a full dumpster to make sure, okay, yeah, it's three quarters right. full. I can schedule for Tuesday for 48, 72 hours in advance. I mean, again, I'm not up there. Then, I don't know, but this is just an outside... Looking They're not there Wednesday, Thursday. So they, on Tuesday, would have to make that evaluation to even make it for the following week because they're not there and they can't call it in for pickup on a Friday. I think that it's a little, because they're not there in the middle of the week, 
I think it takes and makes it a little harder for them to it, plan. It probably does, but I mean, this is you know, one, it's the hand we're dealt and the hours that we're open, and and you know, and these employees really have been sense. there for a while and they they understand how it works. That I think we just need to figure it out and make it make it work. If that's what the contract says, that right, that we have to give them forty eight hours notice for a pickup. I I I feel like we could schedule one pickup for municipal waste every week, like you're saying, mm -hmm. and then have an ad hoc request. Because the dump, the second dumpster won't be full within 48 hours if we're exceeding. Right. Like if we had to pick up every Tuesday, yep. it closed Wednesday, Thursday. So you have the other dumpster that's probably not full that you're going to use Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday would be picked up. And no, what I mean is, it, it, say that say that it's Christmas week. Yep. And like a lot more trash. And we have a scheduled one dumpster per week pickup. Right. We'll have the second one as a backup. Scheduled? Um, the second one is unscheduled. So the first one's scheduled always. The second one is unscheduled. And if it, if if there's an overage, then you call when you realize, okay, we're going to be we're going to have to unload the second dumpster. You call on on the second dumpster only. So we need to make sure we have good contact information before we can plan that. Yes, <laughs> but that so we know. But as Kevin is saying, yes, Chris and the team, this is what they do every day. So. We have to. It would make sense to ask them if that makes sense. Have have one scheduled and then one ad hoc. I don't know if that's an option. Right. And um, there's probably a good reason why it's not already been done. I mean, just curious. You're. I mean, you use the transfer station, right? Yeah. So you're using the transfer station. No. no. I'm up there a couple so, times a week. So. On the busy days, mm -hmm. how would that operate if you only had one lane open for, for municipal waste? There's a line. How would Maybe. the line be, and how long do you? I mean, just just a ballpark. How long would it take you to get in and out of there? I'm guessing. Ballpark. Probably no more than five or ten minutes if it was a long line. It depends really on how fast the person ahead of you is moving stuff and how much they have. There are guys that come up there with trailers that might have ten bags of trash. I mean, it's not a long period of time. I don't get into it. There's also like people. If the line is exceeding X number of cars, open the second lane. Because that second ad hoc dumpster yeah. is going to be Normally, full both right lanes would be open unless yeah. that dumpster was full. If that dumpster is full, then that's happened a couple times. They've only had one available for people to use. Right. But the, it's not, you, you wouldn't sit there 20 minutes waiting. The line moves pretty quickly. So the other part of that, too, that, that Chris had mentioned, because I asked him, I'm trying to understand this, and I said, so even if you just closed down, you know, you had one recycling and one solid waste. And you had them open. And as long as they were in the middle lanes, he said, you know, you can have two lanes essentially serving the same dumpster. Yes. That you can use. But he says that right. those ones are the ones that are full and using the outsides. Now you lost the ability, I guess, to use the first lane. Well, the first lane you have the recycling and then the dumpster. So the second lane is then the trash and the recycling. And the third lane, it would be the second lane and third lane are probably the ones that you could get the most use out of. Mm -hmm. Um and a lot of people like the third lane because it's up high and you don't have to pick bags up as high to dump them. So there's usually a line that people that want that lane particularly, they'll wait in line for that. Right. I, th I mean, I think it sounds like for the sake of the financial position of the Board of, uh, board of Health in the town, I mean, I think that they may have to sacrifice a slightly longer wait time and try to prioritize filling or right, conduct right, experiment. right. They usually don't have the middle lane open. It's usually either end. I think instead of asking that for them to change off the bat, could we ask them to conduct an, ex like an experiment? Is that reasonable? Yeah. yeah. If I were them, I'd feel like that's a little bit more compromised could than we, asking them to just change it from changing um, right up. I'm going to wonder if we could ask if they could keep track of which container um, and when it gets picked up, which lane. Um, you know, so we can get an idea each week of what's filling up. I, I would think that the one on the outside on the very end, that one would fill up pretty quickly. I mean, I'm just thinking of it as, as, as simple as, you know, if you had two of them side by side and you just closed one completely. Like, let's just say it's down for maintenance. I mean, and we only have one. I mean, how bad would that line back up as far as on a busy day? I mean, can we physically basically have... One open and this gets filled and we call it in pretty much when it's it's almost filled and then we go to this one. I mean on normal operation. Aside from maybe peak hour on a Saturday or something where it's like okay every yeah. third car we can send through the other lane just to just to keep the you know the line down. But 
like normal operation, can we simply you you probably could have them? Can we do just that. use this one dumpster? And I mean, kill to it. ideally try to fill this whole dumpster, and when it's very close, we can call it in, engage it to okay, this should be full tomorrow, and we can call it in today and have it okay. scheduled for 48 hours. I mean, I'm just and brainstorming here. Yeah, no, and I like that, and I would suggest that the full dumpster is the scheduled one. We'll have a scheduled dumpster. Yeah, and, and you'll know which one's going to go out, and you'll fill that one. That's the one that gets filled, and then yeah. you have your I think you'd have surplus to, dumpster. You kind of have to do both. I think you're going to need to have a scheduled one, and then potentially an ad hoc if they fill up, because they're going to need every week to empty at least one. Yes. And so if we schedule it, then there's no... Not being able to get through, so leaving a voicemail, nobody calls you back. Mm -hmm. They call you back, they need three days to pick it up. So if you schedule it... Very logically, make, as you're saying, we'll make best efforts to fill the scheduled dumpster yeah. every week. Yeah. And surplus, if there's you know, Goes in if the there's oven. a huge problem and there's a big delay and the line's out the door, of course, open the lane. Right. But Which they it's do. always with the intention of filling the first yeah. dumpster. This feels like logical process. Like is, And is that happening already? I... I I think that's what we need to confirm. <laughs> well, that's right. I just he's not sure. Yeah, it is for logical process. I but mean, every time he's not calling, he's texting. And every time he texts, I get a copy of the text. I get text to I think part of the problem is the communica communication. Yep. I think part of the problem is communication. And then the other part of it, too, um, is possibly, possibly maintenance on the dumpsters. I don't know. But Chris had mentioned something about, you know, some of them have holes in them and, um, issues that he's brought up to them that they're supposed to address. So again, in the conversation with them, that yep. that stuff can be brought up. And one other thing that he did mention was that sometimes they they take the incorrect dumpsters, or maybe that's maybe that's an issue of numbering right. that they're not you know they're not numbered correctly, or maybe we should number you know the lanes, or I mean not the lanes, but the the maybe it's something we should do with numbering to say at yeah, spot take spot one and four or whatever it is that maybe it's something we should do that's more consistent than probably ratty old numbers that are on their dumpsters that they drop off. Can't they just uh, spray yeah. paint one, two, three the on the ground? The compact is and you want so right, but if we, it's on the if you spray paint in front of it the thing is you when you pull into the lane, yeah this lane on the very the very first lane has recycling on the left hand side and the one in the middle is trash. So that serves lane one and lane two mm -hmm. for trash. So you could, lay, you know, you could put on the, the compactors one, two, three. But yeah, you could do that. But they switch off. So no, there's actually four. Four. There's four because four the first lane, lane yeah. you have recycling. Right. And you so have if, trash. You put, if you got numbers so that you know it's not willy nilly. If you bought like the what do they call those? Things that you need to spray paint the... But you have to spray paint the other end, which is the part that comes out that they... No, if you did it on the ground. On the ground. One, oh, on the ground. okay. Like, and on the ground. the truck drive is coming this in is, the other like direction. The this is in. one yeah. R, because this is recycling. One R. Two. Right. Three R. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, the recycling would all go together, because it's they use it from both sides. In in the middle lane, oh, it goes right. both sides. So, yeah, if you yeah. just, just label... Essentially, wherever the truck is going to... Back up yeah. and see it. Is that's where it needs right, to be? Right at the far end, not where yeah. you come in. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Where I come in, they're not going to see no, it. No, no, no. On the ground, if you label by with spray paint one through however many dumpsters are there, and when you text in, empty number one, empty number two, from the number that's on the ground. Yeah, and, I think, and, and people there need to know which that's kind of correct one too. I mean, that's like a, I would think that'd like, be difficult uh, to screw up. Like Peter said, I think this is all pretty logical stuff that. I think should be addressed fairly easily. I think, yeah. and I, I would, I would guess that these guys have already tried a lot of this. And if if yeah. Chris were here, we'd have a good conversation about what works and what doesn't. I do wonder though if the if the scheduled pickup would improve the the service experience with this vendor. The weekly scheduled pickup would improve the, the our relationship with them. Um, in, in, yeah, and they have they have it scheduled that you know they're basically going to alternate, like you said, yeah. they're going to alternate that. Let's just call it dumpster one, dumpster two. Yep. Dumpster one is the priority to get filled that's being picked up Thursday, and that's right. dumpster two is next Thursday. So you, need, it's your job. You need to make sure that this is full for Thursday. And right. those companies can right. pick up when they're not there, right? Yes. So they could pick up on a Wednesday, Thursday. The other thing is when this company first came in, they seemed they were real gung ho about doing everything that we needed, and then they kind of like. 
<laughs> so the, the other thing he did bring up in that email, I didn't mean to bypass over, but the fluorescent light bulbs. Yep. So I don't know if that's something that we can review the contract and see yeah. if that's in there. And when we have the phone conversation, Gil, if we can find out, are they still taking those? For, is that false information or is that accurate? Because if that's accurate, that might be something we have to revisit on the fee list to, to cover our costs on it. it. We don't charge anything for bulbs. Right, but if we're paying now to get rid of them, then oh, we're right. going to have to I revisit them. Pardon that, me? That's always paid for this cost. We've never paid. We've never, never paid for them. Right. Ever. So, so the other company, ABC, took them. Right. She'd have to look at the contract. So that's We've never, that's ever paid for fluorescent bulbs to be removed. Never. It was that's, always included in the contract. That's what I'm saying. So we'll have to we review need to the contract this. that if that's not in there, and now we are on the hook for paying for it, we're going to have to I can you know, find out a fee on that to at least cover I our costs. I can find out where we would have to dispose of them. Mm -hmm. okay. So recapping, um, discuss an experiment with Chris where we have... Uh, rotating um, pickup, scheduled pickup, where dumpster one is on week one, dumpster two is on week two, then go to dumpster one, dumpster two. Mm -hmm. um, dumpster. And a cardboard somewhere in the middle. Yeah, ooh, ooh. cardboard would remain ad hoc, but I think it would improve the relationship with the vendor. And it actually and would be good if they could even pick up on Wednesdays and Thursdays when there's no traffic, there's no people there. Um, yeah, that's when they normally pick up. Wednesday or Thursday? Yes. Yeah. 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 There's nobody there to get in their way. So what what we're kind of thinking is that if we were to plan a pickup for single stream and solid waste, one a week. Yep. So we have two of each. Single stream, it, it seems like week, definitely. One week, two, week one, week two. That would be the proposal. But I think Chris might have good reasons why this might not work. He's probably tried this. Let's. Or would the company be able to pick up? Would they pick up one on Wednesday and one on Thursday? Like, I mean, we, we need to have some consistency, though, I think. Right. And I think just trying to get a hold of someone saying, hey, we need service. But if it's planned and, right. and they pick up every Thursday and now they're not showing up or they're canceling or whatever. I mean, that's that's back on that, them. Oh, it is. But you even know, if it's because what they're doing from the sounds of it is basically saying, well, you know, you, you could schedule with us, but we'll do what we can for you, and we'll be there 48 hours. I later. think it's the call-ins that they're giving him that for, the, you know, two days to three days. But I'm wondering, if we just set up every week, one thing gets picked up, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday, because I don't think they can pick up both at the same time, that every week on Wednesday you come and pick up the solid waste. You come back on Thursday and do the recycling. Because right. we always have a ton of recycling. Right, and I, and I think that amount of consistency, I, I would think, would give them, okay, they know every Which Thursday one has to be, they need to have this one filled. And they next need Thursday, Tuesday night when you're ready to leave, make sure that's full for the pickup. The challenge is if we, if we go high, and this is, like, I don't want to chase this, this is a rabbit hole. If on week one we have a lot of surplus and dumpster one is set to get picked up, but we have a lot of surplus and dumpster two gets half full, when we're in week two, dumpster two is going to fill up much quicker. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to get an ad hoc pickup on dumpster two, start filling dumpster one. Like it's going to throw it. It off should side. average out though. It should. That's yeah. the experiment. But I think it's it, you know Chris might say like we're going to chase our tail here because it just takes one round of one one round of excess to really blow it out, out of the water potentially. Because I think we've had only once that I can remember where we didn't have space. Like the dump couldn't take. The, oh, well, we had to do the recycling thing, but that's different. Yeah. The company refused to pick it up. Um, but there's not been a lot of times where we've had to say to people, we can't take your trash. I'm not as worried about that. I'm more worried about compromising the schedule that we have with the vendor. If we establish the week one, week two schedule, then... I think he just calls them in. in. I don't they're think all we text, have schedule. They're all text back and forth. Yeah, all he, text he yeah. just says, oh, I think this one's going to be ready in three days. And he sends them a text. So there's not continuity now right. in terms of anything scheduled. Right, but we'll it, be locking in with the vendor if we schedule it on a day. We do. Yeah. But, and then it's really up to them. At least they have consistency. They can right. plan on it. Like you said, they there know. could be reason why they, they don't think it'll work, but I think it's, I mean, I, I, think, it's, it. I think it's worth trying. Yep. I think that it makes sense to try that, that at least there's consistency. They can plan whatever day they feel makes sense for pickup, but that needs to be full on this day. And right, right. You know, it, it's that simple. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. 
to the mall on Sunday if you need to fill something up. Monday and Tuesday, you send that right. everybody into that lane. And it's not, it's never really a long wait. Never. And I sometimes go more than once a day. What time do you typically go? I'm just curious. Different times. Like um, the other day I went, it was like 10 minutes to 12. Other times I'm sliding in just before 4.45. <laughs> so, um, and I might go two days in a row. Because one day, like yesterday, I went and I took cardboard. Because I couldn't fit in the car with the yeah. trash. The day before I do trash. I feel like half pickups are up. Half pickups pick 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 before pick the problem was they the gauges didn't work and they didn't know what okay. it was. So yeah. that I don't yeah. know that that still remains a problem. I hope not. It was before the gauges were fixed. And to me, that's kind of bullshit. Yeah. yeah. We should know that everything is going to be Right. And Teresa knows because she gets the bill. It's Friday at lunchtime. Can we schedule um, for Monday? I think they could schedule. Yeah. Uh, so, discussion with Chris. I'll follow up with Chris. Um, yeah. Gil and I will kind of get together and follow up with Chris on what we discussed. And, and then the contacts. Private contacts. Yep. And we'll follow up with... Uh, and then the fee schedule for both. Correct. Oh, we'll, and I'll find out if there's anyone else we can deal with for the flowers and follow -up. Okay. Um, Gil, do you want to go through your agent report? Yeah. But I'd like to start off on the hours. Do you want to discuss the hours? However you want to handle but it. I like to, or you know, is yours? Yeah, I'd like to discuss the hours. I've been cut severely cut, and it's just impossible to do this job at the amount of hours and the signs. Um, a couple of other departments have reached out to, you know, to get you know, funding. Uh, I suppose you come up with an article, an article where I propose an end. You know, to uh, for the October town meeting, and, uh, what I had here is uh, the same thing that uh, they did. Typed up the board to possibly vote this is the article, and it can be submitted. I mean, it's late, but it can be submitted because the articles are still in draft. Uh, Conservation at their meeting voted this article to be presented and submitted. I'm returning the hours because it's just you cannot do this job. On the hours that they get, the that. conservation yeah. agent and the, uh, myself, uh, it's just impossible. There's so much stuff going on. Uh, one of the suggestions of uh, the food inspections go back to the independent inspector doing it. We have over 48 uh, uh, food establishments. It's just too much. It's, it's growing and growing, and we're not progressing. This is a major setback to the board of health as far as this regression in hours. And other departments are, you know, trying to refund and uh, said that they were going to try to, you know, reinstate the uh, hours at October. I haven't seen anything as of that yet. But for insurance, the you know, conservation, I guess it also that, you know, we do it, you know, it's, you know, fine like that, but restoring the hours back to what they were. A question about the proposal to uh, move to an independent Food inspection agent. That was done before. That's been done for a few years, mm -hmm. and that helps out quite a bit because the role of board of health has changed dramatically over the last three or four years. And most towns has retained, you know, the independent inspectors. You know, we've only had one. Other towns have two or three. I mean, Halifax is only single inspectors. We have two inspectors, but they usually rotate two inspectors. It's been always something to do. The inspectors do, you know, the, the initial inspection. And help it is go out and you know, check a plot. There are problems and whatnot. You know, they'll check the problems, uh, outdated material. Like I'll go to the store and go through the whole store as far as taking outdated material. We had the major food recalls, uh, Quaker Oats. That was pretty tough. That took a lot of time. You know, big businesses usually take care of that stuff. They're pretty good on it. I mean, Shaw's is that kind. PBS is pretty good. So when, it, when it trickles down to a lower food attachment, they're a little bit slower on it. Yep. And found a lot of places that's what the follow up question, Bill. Yeah. Sorry. No, keep uh, I'm just because I want to understand right, summarize, yeah. the proposal for the independent food agent. Are you performing those inspections now and you're suggesting to manage uh, the reduction in hours we increase the services of an independent food agent? Yes. I mean I do the opening of the stuff, like uh, just a Example, tonight, the pineapple girl. I mean, I went in there for the initial inspection that, yes, 
the facility was okay to have a food inspection in there. But she still needs the inspection, the total food inspection, when she starts operating. Two a year, correct? Yes, two a year. Okay. This takes place two a year. And uh, up that with... Uh, How do we fund the independent inspector? Uh, it's through a food permit process, right? Through the, the food permit. Is it, no, what, what part of money, what line item does that come from? Yeah, what line item does food inspection come from? We don't really have a line item for it. We don't. So we've been taking out of the money that we've been, that well, we, we got in from... We haven't septic. used her this year. No, I haven't because it, we used somebody for a long time, but, but it was really something that was part of his job. So then we put it back on his plate. Yep. But we were paying her out of the same fund that the septic money comes into. Um, and then I See? stopped doing that because I was told I couldn't do that. Okay, so there was um, not a funding source. That was my pay. question. Is there a funding no. source to pay for the independent no, inspector? No, we were that taking is... it out of that line item. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some money in the budget that we could use to... It depends on how much it's going to cost. Do we have an idea where we are right now with inspections and how many are coming uh, due? That was going to be my question, yeah. too. Is where, all, where, all, where, where, where are we? We're all kind of doing it behind. I mean, so we're already behind with inspections. But we're already behind. she left them up to date, right? She left last year. She she, well, she left in 2023. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. Last year. Oh. So, like, refining the problem statement. We used to have an independent inspector, inspector. That duty was moved on to your plate. Your hours have been reduced. So in addition to having to pick up the hours from the independent inspector, your hours have also been reduced. So we have a compounding problem. Is that yes. the right problem statement? All right. Thank you. And how it's becoming an emergency. I don't know. Thank it's becoming you. pretty urgent. She's, I, I don't know where it is, but there's a list. Mm -hmm. and yeah, there was a list that there, we had. There's a list of all the different businesses and when they're inspected, and then when they need to be inspected again, and you really have to look at that. And that's running behind because of the yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah, thank you. When was the last time you did a food inspection? Uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, restoration coffee. He did, I did oh, because they're new. Inspection. They're brand new. inspection there. And uh, I've been several. We did behind because I've been behind. I, I think what her question was was the six month inspections. Right. How? When was the last time you did an inspection for? You know the like the, the routine when, when inspections, not again. an opening inspection. And right. what I understood. Yeah. What I think I understood what yeah. you were proposing was that you will still do the opening inspections. Yeah. But what you're proposing to the board is to contract right. out. The two times per two year times inspection. inspection. And I do the openings and I do all the problems. The problems and complaints. The opening, the, the food inspection twice a year is a service safe inspection. Yep. Yep. What, what were we paying before per inspection? It was per inspection, right? Was I want to say $25? I think it was 50 I think it's 50 We paid her. I think it was 50 or 25 for a small place. No, I think no, it's 50 no matter what the size. No yeah, we paid that uh, with, I think um, Shaw's was more because that takes more because it's huge. Do you have the current list available that you can pull up? There? That's what I'd like to see. Decide on anything. Where we're at. I just, well, one, I want to see where we're at, and two, I'd like to see um, how many inspections right. we're going to end up with a year. Well, no, just how many we're going to end up with a year if we're talking $50. Do you want to see the current one or 12? 24, right? Hold on, Mary. Current, everything that's for this year that's needs New businesses, to be done, everything. Right, every, yeah. Well, she's got everything on yeah. this list. Yeah, this is current up a list that you have as far as... So that as we know, we can look at it and figure out who's been inspected who needs to be inspected. I need a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have them with me. They're in my bag and I didn't bring my good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And then we have to determine from what pool of money can we fund. Because we, we, we'd know better how many inspections need to be done, yep. and then we would know how much money we need. Okay. That makes and sense. And I think it's an important statistic to bring to the October town meeting as well. Ooh. Gil, as you're saying, as, as part of that exhibit, we could say to to offset the cost. Is that you? The Board of Selectmen. Trying to refund the money. So I can add them up then? In October at the town meeting, is I have no idea. Like, yeah, that's you know where the money's yeah. coming from, but that's their goal is to reinstate. If yep. they, I'm like I said, I just haven't been to a meeting to find out where they think that money's coming from, right? But that's the plan in October is to be re, um, reinstated. So 
I don't know what you what he was proposing in terms of um, a warrant. The, yeah, there's we an don't article have money. There's so, an article that's bring. Go ahead. I was just going to say. Oh, so yeah. We have 40, 49 currently. Um, the last time this list was updated, and we have an OP. So I don't see yeah. restoration. Coffee. No restoration coffee. So that's not on here, and is that she won't be? So we're we're actually talking over fifty. So we're talking okay. at least so at fifty then. times two two it equals one hundred inspections per year. Right. Five at grand. fifty, yeah, it's five thousand dollars. That's if we conclude. Kill, that would yeah. save you a significant amount of time. You have some question about. It. So is this the date that it was inspected so far this year? Mm -hmm. Over here? Uh, I'm not sure. That could be. Yes. A lot on here that haven't been inspected. The yes. schools? The this schools, have, schools have been inspected this year, yes. No. They're coming up. Because you usually do them in September. Yeah, I usually do them in September. And is it once a year or twice a year? Once a year. I'm doing a school card here. I think it's once a year. Uh, they're supposed to be done in August, so the school opens yeah. in September. Yeah. yeah, when the school closes and then when they open generally. Right. Yeah. right. To make sure all the food is cleaned out. Cleaned out. All right, so that would be more June. Down. June. They should be done in June and they should be done again in August already to make sure that they're open. Mm -hmm. I, um, the problem with this, can we see last year's only because there's stuff that you did in December? That's not going to show up here because this is, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? We, we did have a, the last list we had looked at, it basically was the last year of inspections, I believe. And it gave oh, the it dates. It wasn't calendar of, year? It I is believe calendar so. year. Yeah. Okay. It, and it showed when the last, basically, the inspections were done. So we could look at there being spaced out correctly that they're right. not exactly six months, but right. we could yeah. stagger them all. Right, so you could. A couple right. this month, a couple So if months, I knew what was done in November and what was done in December, then I also can look at this and tell what the priorities are that haven't had an inspection in the last six months. I'm um, thinking about the, the bigger problem are. statement. That <laughs> the bigger problem is we don't have enough hours. man hours to cover that. Right. I think that's and the issue. We right? need to find $5,000 to support a twice yearly inspection for all food establishments. Right. And I think that becomes the question. Is there a line is there a line in our income and that we can I don't think I don't think we have any line. Right. We don't. Um, even if he did half and she did half even from we peace. still yep. have to figure out where do we get twenty five where, where do we get the money? Um and we might be able to eke out a little, but we're not going to get some five thousand dollars. If it becomes a you know, type of debt or something, so it could be a reserve, you know, reserve fund transfer or something like that. Yeah. All right. Yep. So, where, mean, where I, is this is last year? I think this is kind of irrelevant to our conversation okay. and the actual concern we have yep. when they're last done. But that's yeah. The the timing and the priority of it is is important. But I think for this, it's funding yeah. an auxiliary resource to support inspections because Gill's hours were cut. Right. Um, so, and, what do, what do we do with this? Do we reach out to the select board and tell them what our issue is? That well, if they, I don't know. I if they don't have money, what, where are they going to get it from? Well, it's a public health concern. One, so it needs to be it needs to be addressed. I mean, there's no way around it as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the, these inspections need to happen. Yep. And they need to be done correctly. So, if it's a matter of with 25 hours a week, which is not a lot of hours. There's not enough time in the day to do that. Yep. And it's going to consistently fall behind and be further behind and further behind, and that's not going to solve our problem. So, you know, I, I appreciate Gil bringing this to our attention that it's an issue that he's not going to be able to keep up with it. So the question is, what do we do for a resolution? And I think right now, I think what we can do is if we don't have the money to pay for it and we don't have a budget to take it out of, I think we need to bring it to the selectman's attention that say this is our problem. You know, we have food inspections to do. We have roughly 100 inspections a year to do. And we were paying $50 before per inspection roughly that we're looking at a little upwards of $5,000 for the year that we if need we to find. outside we, we, we need to find the money so that, the, I mean, these are important inspections. So you need to be done correctly. These are food establishments. I mean, they, they need to be done. They need to be done correctly. That ignoring the problem is not 
you know, in the best interest of the of the residents and of this board. I think what we need to prepare for this discussion, and Gil, and I'm sorry for this because it feels micromanaging, is a summary of your allocation to other services that demonstrate that you don't have time for, for these inspections. So the hours, like 50 inspections per year is X number of hours, and that translates into X number of hours per week, et cetera. So if, if I'm the select board, I might question, well, tell me why this can't be prioritized, and we'd have to have a response. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not questioning what you're doing. I think it may be, it may be questioned. So, so question for Teresa. I think I understand it. I'm, again, I'm not a college grad, but so basically what you're saying is come up with what the hours per week are spent on, essentially. Like, like I think this, yeah, this many hours are allocated to doing this, this many are allocated to doing this, yeah. and at the end of the week I have 1.5 hours available to do miscellaneous overage, you know, unforeseen things that I do not have an additional... Yep. Any additional time left? In Here's time. my hours deficit, I got and this is where it's impacting. Yeah. It. So it, your hours deficit now is already at 15 compared to what it was, yeah. and that that 15 hours could translate almost exactly into this. If if this was 15 hours per week, we can reasonably say Gil lost 15 hours a week, and this task took 15 hours a week. We need to fund. Yeah, it. and that's one of many things that aren't going to get done. Yep, and uh, that's why you know proposing this article like the other. Proposition proposed an article for a town meeting because I don't know if it's in the draft town meeting for the you know selectmen. So the conservation board. This is the article conservation board the other night. If you want to look at it, look at the article. Yeah, I do. The same because it sounds like this is them case making for the same problem. Yeah, it, it, you know, conservation has gone through the same issue. And in allocating time. Kind of propose a scenario for uh, tonight, this uh, board of health meeting. Uh, a situation that had occurred in town that. So is that enough detail? No. I, just, just, just I, I understand the problem statement, yeah. but it doesn't have. A, a, yeah. It is, there's nothing to it. Yeah. So. This is just a general article and the explanation we discussed. On. The thing is, to get the vote tonight for this article to be placed. So. Tonight. Tonight. Yeah. I. I think what Peter's point was, and I agree with it, that yeah. let's put it, let's put the facts in place that, you know, this is what, this is what we're spending our hours on, that we don't have any additional hours. Like, show, show it on paper to say, essentially, what you're trying to say here with the article. Yeah. But let's just put something to back it up that, because the question's going to be asked by multiple people, so that way the answer's already there, that, the question doesn't get answered, uh, asked, and then we're, you know, trying to respond on the fly. To be to be very literal, how how long does an inspection take? That uh, of these two time per year inspections, uh, to, to travel to site, to perform the inspection, to travel back, uh, it, on average. No, it would it would depend. If it's Shaw's, yeah. Shaw's takes like it's almost a, a whole day, yep. right? Whole day. But the small places might be half hour, right? No more than fifteen minutes. Half hour. I, I hate to ask you to like wing it, but what would you say the average? Average. There is no average, right? You have a or total number of hours per year, even like of the fifty. Probably, probably, I mean, yeah, I, I oh, think yeah. I think probably the easiest way, Gil, is you know, in your free time of twenty five hours a week, yeah. <laughs> I go through go through this and and just put put to the left side, right? Go through this list, print it off, go through this list, and put how many minutes you spend at here. I mean, you got to account for like Peter said, you know, the time it takes you literally from door to door to walk out of this office. Have to go, do your get in your car, drive there, do your inspection, and come back. I mean, granted, some of them you should be if you were doing these, you should be grouping them and do you know right, right, should, right. should hit a couple of them. Yes. I mean, yeah. whether yes. it's two inspection days a month, whatever it is to get organized and do that. But I wouldn't be accounting travel, you know, necessarily travel right. time and, and foot time out the door and back in on every one. But I'm just saying to get a ballpark like Peter was asking to just go go down this list so we're prepared when we talk about this next time. Go down the list and put how many minutes you do at each one of these. And we can kind of, you know, at that point gauge it. I don't think we have enough information to really... For example, I, if you said that every inspection, because there are 100 of them per year, right. was two hours. It's 200 hours per year divided by 52 is four hours per week. That you would say that this task yeah. takes four hours per week. Yeah. If, if the average was two hours, if it was three hours, not, we're looking yeah. at six. You know what I mean? So 
and, and that would that that equates to the loft hours. Oh, no. But I'm telling you by looking. I'm just going to mention by looking at this list from 2023. Probably a good 65% of these have only been inspected once last year, and they were never inspected a second time. So, and there's quite a few of them that go like this was 321-23. The restaurant wasn't inspected in September, October, and November, and December. Um, so a lot of this is stuff that's not impacted by this 25 hours a week, because this was the end of last year that he should have been done. He should have been done during October, November, December of 23, and they weren't. Right, but if we're worried about compliance. Oh, yeah. If it's two times per year, go off the compliance minimum, not off the stick. No, but this is right. actually when it was done. But I had a question. Yes, she at, started saying something about money. So I wanted yep. to find out what she started to say. What? When we were asking about, at some point I thought you said we might be able to take money from. Well, can, we can look at the budget and see, but I don't think we have $5,000 so, extra. W without taking a real action on this, I mean, would it make sense to, you know, take a vote to support, to reach out to the selectmen, explain our problem to them, that what well, what we feel is a problem or a problem that's growing and maybe reach out and discuss with an outside contractor or two and get quotes just so we see where we're at of what they'd be charging us to do it. I mean, I don't know if the person was doing She's it before not. we could get a, right. you know, right. an estimate from them. Or I don't even know if she's still available because she was contemplating right. moving out of So maybe there's, a, maybe there's a couple we can, you know, try to put but it out. But it's already August. Yeah. Closing in on the end of August, so it would really only be one inspection for the remainder of the year for all of those places. Right, right. but I'm just saying, like, you know, not to hire them, but can we try to reach out and somehow get, you know, an estimate from someone on what they'd be charging us per inspection or a couple if we can? I mean, just if we if we end up going that road, we're kind of a, a ahead of the curve and we already kind of have things in place yeah. to at least know where we're at, what we're going to spend. and. So I can, I can reach out to independent inspection services and get quotes if that's helpful. I mean, I think we, I think we, I think we're going to have to, I think we're going to have to do something. So I think to get the ball rolling would make sense rather than just I'll, I'll support table that this until, yeah. okay. That we will actually be in a position maybe next meeting if we have to make a decision, we'll, we'll be pretty informed and have yep. hopefully something. Okay. Gil, is that helpful? Yeah. Uh, well, like I say, uh, the, the position is, uh, it's very difficult to estimate the time you're spending on things. Uh, I've got a, the scenario that uh, we finished up today. Uh, it's a long story, but we had a situation in a culvert in Hanson. Uh, the culvert was plugged up by beavers. Uh, it flooded two homes, and the homes were flooded. Uh, people that own the homes uh, reached out to uh, the highway department to see what they can do. The highway department contacted me, and we went over to the uh, the outfall pipe and everything, the pipe was plugged up, it's been plugged up solid. At that time we started, you know, working with the highway to try to clear because the beavers had it plugged up. And eventually the homeowners got, you know, they got more and more flooded and we were able to get back down there again and clear it. And finally it got cleared today. So this, this whole deal here, I probably have maybe 18, 20 hours involved in this and involved finally today. The fire department, highway department, the fire department had three crews there. So the highway guys could go into the culvert, clear the culvert out, and get the stream running you know, where it's supposed to be back. And DDP threatened with a uh, stormwater management complaint for the town because of the fact that it was stormwater management and wasn't being uh, addressed. So I had that all documented. You know, I never sent this to the board. So I, you know, if the board want to review this, I get the pictures of what took place today as far as you know, clearing the pipe. Fire department being there, the highway department being there. Uh, it was pretty intense. They had to take air, air quality testing, and and this became quite quite serious. I had gone down to Lisa Green about the highway department uh, ignoring the people's complaints. Uh, the backyards were you know totally flooded, both houses, and uh, the guy from DEP you know told the you know highway department in town straighten it out. Otherwise, it'd be a wetland violation. So. So this is a lot of house to hide, you, know, you can't break away. And on my agent reports, I've been going through some of those things that, you know, 
you know, what's happening, like the fireworks site and that stuff, you know, trying to get a report on what you know, participation in this stuff. And, uh, you know, it becomes so complicated. So, no, side I, I, time, I, I, yes. Thank you. Uh, a septic system repair or installation, yes, there's approximately four to five inspections of that system, and at all different times. So, you know, I'm trying to get you that point. It's an on call type thing, and everything is different because there's so many different things that this job involves. It's an occupation. And it's, some things we're having to take place here is quite serious. I think probably for our next meeting, Gil, I think between now and then, I think it would be beneficial for you to really, like, try to be, it's to your benefit as well as ours so we can fully understand this, but to try to log your workload, I mean, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, pretty thoroughly for the next yeah. month. So mm -hmm. you can go over this with us that you can demonstrate that you do not have time in your day in that 25 hours. I, I believe you. But I think, as Peter mentioned before, just to kind of let's put the facts on paper and make it detailed so there's nothing to question. I mean, it's right in front of you when this adds up to, to X at the end of it. Um, or it doesn't that's add right. up to X, and that's the problem. Yes. Um, you know, the reports, you know, trying to do the reports during the meeting and stuff. Uh, some reports that I do, uh, like the EPA, I've uh, started a file folder on that so that, you know, the, the board can review this folder. You know, what they've done, they've done the They've done the scoring, but it's in uh, it's been redacted. It's a certain form. It's on uh, the EPA website. So that's something you can take a look at. I try to get Adobe to open that up. So these are things I think we really should be discussing. You know, here we stand, uh, Superfund site. We stand here, uh, Zero County Road. I mean, the DP had worked with that. They sent out another directive uh, Friday afternoon to the contractor to, uh, you know, more testing. Uh, they want to get started Monday. So that's another thing I'll be addressing too. Zero County Road. Yeah. So it, it sounds like your work can be understood categorically. Yeah. Like the, here I am with food inspections. Here I am yeah. with septic inspections. Yeah. Here I am with incident management. And here I am with on, ongoing issues, right? So yeah. as Kevin suggests, I think it would be helpful to maybe organize the, the agent's update it, it, it categorically yeah. so we understand here's the number of inspections yeah. that I did. Here's the number of septic food food site and um, etc. And these are our ongoing incidents, like um, yeah. the, the 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 potential Superfund site and um, old call. Yeah, we haven't been getting those reports for reports. months now. Right. Yeah, you, you have been given yeah. us those reports, yeah. so yeah. we don't so know. I try, I try to you know try to reset this all up again, so yep. we understand yeah. it's because I mean it's hard to explain. It's been three and a half months. It's been hard to explain some of these things because it's so involved. Uh, a month ago, there was an accident on South Street. Hole got knocked off. Okay, uh, transformer fell on the ground. Oil leak. So it was all set for another Friday afternoon. Yep. I get a thing from DEP. It hasn't been resolved. You know, it's good. They got to go out there and clean up. They got to do this stuff. So that came out as a report, a median action report to the town and to myself that that cleanup was never done by Harrison. Right. You know, so. And this is like, you know, I told her, I try to keep this in the agent report, stuff that has to be discussed and, you know, make the termination too sometimes. Right. But you need to give us the agent report, though. Right. You need that's, to give it to us why, we know what's going on. That's why I've been doing this for the last few, like, the last two and a half years. You know, uh, it's, no, not the, it's, not the verbal, the written one oh, that we had asked right. for. As far as, you know, your workload and the 25 hours, <clears> we need, <throat> I think, you know, the, the request to... To contract out the food inspections like we were talking, not to circle completely back to that, but yeah, th I think that's a reasonable request. But I think this board and whoever's going to be funding it needs to see that these hours are not here. So I think with all the stuff you're telling us, I mean, you're yeah. you're clearly working, you're doing your job. I think that just needs to be demonstrated to everyone to say, look, Tuesday I did this, 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 this. There's yeah. no time left in my day Tuesday to do an inspection. Wednesday I did this, 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 mm -hmm. and not not to spoon feed us like every five minutes of what you did, but, but yeah. you know, you spent two hours on this, you spent three hours on this, you spent an hour on this, and 45 minutes on this, like, like make it add up to 25 hours a week so we can understand what your work week is like now and that there's no time left in the day for some of these things that we're essentially forced to contract out if that's the case. I mean, did it, that's well said. It is, yeah. I mean, I understand that. Totally the point, I think an inspector's report would pair well with that. It would, it would yeah. you could do both together.
I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a catch-22. I mean, I don't it want is. to see you write a book because, yeah, again, that's what that's happened. Happened. Well, I don't. you're limited yeah, to 25 hours a week. Of writing a book. Don't, yeah. don't write a book, well, but I mean, well, you know, categories. Like, you you got you to gotta make it make sense to us that we can understand yeah. it, we can see where the hours are going, that everyone can see where the hours are going, and that there's no time left in the day, in that 25, you know, in the 25-hour week. You're out doing an inspection with time. Is what you spent an hour there. You spent two hours there. Is that, um... Is that pretty much it? Anyone have anything? I do not know. Are we? No, I just want you to know on this list. Do you have anything else? I do one thing. I just just want to let you know that on this list of inspections, there are 40 that need to be done. So that we have an idea. Great. So Peter's going to reach out and try to see if we can get a couple, you know, quotes on that. Quotes on independent Um, inspection. Teresa, maybe if you could reach out and see if possibly the person that was doing them before. Yeah, Yeah. she was talking about moving to um, Virginia. I don't know if she did because I haven't talked to her. Um, If there's anything that you could maybe brainstorm or come up, just shoot off an email or something just to kind of see. Just so we're we're prepared if we have to make a decision on it. Okay. All right. Um, She's the big... Motion to adjourn? Yeah. Oh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Six sixteen. I had to get to the food pantry.